Good morning, everyone. So this is our third class. I hope you are all doing good. So uh, I think yesterday we were discussing about the unit one. Huh? So what are the chapters in unit one? Uh, let let me do a synopsis. Huh? Just a recap of the previous class. So it will be also helpful for you. So what we did is that yesterday we were discussing about our first unit, and in that we also told. Uh, like in, you know the introduction part in which we will be covering all the basic concepts apart from that there is dimensions of ethics which will be covered separately and this helps you mainly in clearing your case study part and uh, another two more topics is human values human values is uh, nothing but you know uh, the values contributed are from the uh, you know lessons learned from the reformers administrators leaders this topic will be there and I, I most probably I will come, I will compare this with the fifth unit, you know. Both will be put together and will be taught to you. That will be easier for you to understand. And the last topic is role of uh, society, educational institutions, uh, dot, 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 huh, in inculcating values within you. So, this is the first unit which we will be covering within a week or uh, within six, seven days. Then, we started with our definition of ethics. So we, we defined ethics, right? Probably we also took two or three examples so that it, you can understand very clearly. And I also said how you are facing an ethical dilemma in your case studies. And this is how UPSC will also ask questions to you. Like, uh, you know, you'll be facing a dilemma in that situation where two or more options are equally justifiable. And you doesn't know what to choose. In that situation, I already told you that, uh, good morning, Mr. Abhijit. So I, in, in that case, if you're facing a situation like that, uh, I already said you have to go for the prescribed ethics part. In that, you will be finding three or four types of ethics, you know, uh, the deontological ethics. Um, particularly, the te teleological ethics is the one which we are using most, uh, most of the time in order to choose our options. So this is how uh, we also was discussing about Niketa Mehta case and uh, as well as you know uh, Savita Halapanava, Dr. Savita Halapanava's case and both cases we said uh, in case of Niketa Mehta there was no ethical dilemma at all and but in case of Savita Halapanava there is an ethical dilemma and we also said how we have to choose a greater among two goods or lesser among two evils, right. Then uh, after that we were also we also shifted our topic to law and ethics because we draw a diagram in that we have some terms which we doesn't know so we all should always clear it and then move forward. So we went to law and ethics. In law and ethics we also define what is law. So what is the difference between law and ethics, right? And we also said not all illegal acts are immoral because always there is some interlinking but completely they cannot be overlapped. So we gave two sentences. In that two sentences, we also subdivided into again two because this question is repeatedly asked in 2015 and 16. So most probably again there, there is a chance for repetition and in the same format or in the different format but the answer might be the same. They might be asking what is the difference between law and ethics and what is the similarity and they act as a two face of the same coin. Like this we saw the topic. Then we went to human values I hope so. So we touched the human values. I said what is values for that I also explained through India Bhutan relationship and also uh, instinct, instant from you know Mahabharata. And like this uh, we defined what is values and we also said there is two types of values. Uh, that is instrumental and intrinsic. This is a major division of values for that also we also explained with an axe story. And with that we completed our value systems. Then right and I hope so I gave definitions for you too. Should we have to complete anything in uh, values? I hope so we have done. Let me check it out for you. Then we will move to the next heading. Right, we have done I hope so. So we also took, uh, took notes about instrumental and uh, intrinsic values. Now we have to do with the So in our diagram yesterday we were we gave a diagram for ethics definition like this huh? it be easy for your television also we said ethics huh? right any diagram we can take we can say like this evaluates good morning, good morning. evaluates human conduct 
right so we said like this uh, so i was just giving a recap so need not panic uh, we have not taken anything new so we are going to discuss now the new topic so i just uh, summarized yesterday events and today we are going to start with human conduct right human conduct so already we said what is meant by conduct conduct is not but thing nothing but behavior how a human behave how he act huh? for certain circumstances or in certain situations how a human is acting so this is nothing but we can call as actions human actions so your first topic in first unit is essence determinants and consequences of ethics in human action this is the first topic okay but this before seeing this we also has to see two three more topics uh, one is that i'll write here otherwise we will forget ethics and religion ethics and morality this we will be seeing uh, then we will be come touching our main topic right first we have to see about human actions right human actions so i already said that there was uh, you know the questions you can't understand that from which area this question has been shoot out already in 2018 there was a question which was asked like this you know anger and intolerance are enemies of correct understanding Hmm? this is a quote given by gandhi ji and uh, they asked you that whether you agree or not or explain something like that i don't remember the question properly so it was like this so you know uh, before uh, going into a subject i want to tell one thing when you are doing an answer writing practice you should know what are the vocabularies which is used by upsc such as explain ha huh? okay then describe illustrate all those things you have to know the meaning and then first you have to understand i hope there are some 15 terms like this which you please ask users in the question ha huh? so when you are taking your old question paper you will come to know about it explain will be there ha huh? so like this some 15 terms are there you have to define is there like this so you you go and identify those terms take a note write it if any of your teachers is doing it is better if not you do the work and understand what is the real meaning of that word because while writing question there is variations when you are while writing question there is variations okay from each and every time there is a slight variation so you have to understand the meaning then only you can write the answer in a proper format he said na when we are writing answer content is important same manner format is also important the way you present is also very important and uh, the structure of the answer only when you understand this you can get the structure of the answer in the proper format right so now we'll go to the actions <coughs> so what they say is that ethics always evaluate uh, human actions you cannot evaluate an animal action na no? can you evaluate only human actions can be evaluated and they also say, say that it should be a deliberate action okay it should be deliberate action there is a particular word which they use for this if you want you can write act as humanus okay it should be a deliberate action it should be a human action as well as it should be a deliberate action in order to evaluate those action using ethics ethics means nothing but a set of moral principles now we are going to say uh, see how human actions how when a human action can be evaluated for that we can draw a small diagram right so what types of actions can be evaluated based on the moral principles this is what we are going to see now like this hmm? can draw a triangle first hmm? 
the action should be performed with knowledge second it should be voluntarily done third with free will human action it means human action so these are the three terms which you have to remember when you are going to evaluate a human action even while giving delivering a judgment a judge will be considering all these factors uh, then according to it the punishment terms also increases and decreases the intensity of the punishment varies based on the uh, manner the crime has been committed so we are saying the human action has to be performed with the knowledge and it should be done it should be voluntarily done and it should be done with free will so let me tell a story for you right hmm? what happens i hope you might have heard this story it is a lady and the you know mangoes mangoes it's an animal story so what happens one time the lady was uh, has adopted the small mongoose which has lost its mother in the forest and she brought it home and she was taking care of the mongoose and she also had a small baby right so what happened she want to go outside to fetch water now so what she did she asked the mongoose that you take care of the child i'm going to fetch water because there is nobody and it, it, it's a village area you know the houses are far apart what happened the lady left and she came back after one hour because you know uh, this is a serious issue in india still we are facing it we have to go walk uh, some 2 3 hours to fetch waters and so what happened she came back after one hour with a pot of water and the moment she came she saw the mongoose sitting in front of her house with the blood in its mouth huh? the moment she saw that uh, scene something flashed in her mind she thought that this mongoose everybody told me you should not trust it's an animal but i trusted it now he has bitten my child and i think he has killed him and the moment she became fearful she dropped her pot on the mongoose head because of anger and she killed the mongoose and she went inside and she saw that her baby is definitely fine and it was there playing and nearby she saw a snake was killed hmm? by the mongoose the mongoose has killed the snake that is why it had blood in its mouth but she mistakenly thought that this mongoose has killed a child so what is the moral of the story what do you understand from the story hmm? because you know uncontrollable emotions so the we are seeing about human action same time we should also see about the impediments impediments of human actions we can say like impediments of human action what are the impediments are impediments to call like that that will be better impediments to human action means what are the things which are going to disturb a human's mind to act huh stay in the stable manner in the stable manner when you are very clear i hope you understand this when you are very clear uh, you will be able to grasp and observe everything yes mr abhijit has heard the story in school definitely he has uh, studied his moral science i hope so so mm, you also uh, very nice so what happens when we are very this is see i already told ethics is the one which is going to bind you tame you uh, and you going to shape you so what you have to do is whenever your emotions is uncontrollable you will not perform better it may be it may be your life uh, deciding even it may be your exams it may be your future plans anything so when you are not controlling your emotion at the right place you can't perform well that is how whenever you are in the fear hmm? anger the anger mode they say you should not decide anything you should at least keep silent so that after your angerness has been left you you will know the reality okay you first you have to understand the situation now how you will understand your mind is not in the stable situation this was asked as a question anger and intolerance now what is in india these two are <laughs> anger and intolerance huh you understand that is the main culprit that is the main culprit for lot of 
problems which is happening in India, particularly the intolerance. People are nowadays not tolerable towards to the diversity feature of Indians. Huh? We all are diverse. Each and every one are not same because we are not of, not of the same gene. Huh? We do have different genes. Definitely, each and every one who are of, belong to the same place also behaves in a different manner. So, intolerance and anger, both the things are, you know, the very worst tool in order for, in order to destroy the correct understanding of you. That is why when you are going to your personality test, the examiner will not test your brain power or not the memory power. He will test how far you are tolerable, how far you are stable in your views. That is how the questions like, when I uh, take the hand of your sister and run away, what will you do? The questions will come to you like this. And if you are you are, you are very angry and intolerable person, you may think, how this person dared to say to me like this? And if you feel like that, the moment you feel, you can't say outside because he is the senior. You can't tell outside, but the moment you feel in your mind, then what happens? Yes, good morning. Sorry. Uh, so what happens? The moment you feel, you will lose your stability. Your balance will go. That moment he will capture you. And uh, the rest, 20 minutes or 25 minutes, you will do the poor performance in your life. And then you will be kicked out of UPSC. This is how many of your seniors are suffering after getting into the... They will be crossing mains three or four times. If you go and interact with them, you know. But they do have a poor, in, uncontrollable emotion within them. That is why the experts are sitting there in order to read your minds. So we will be training in such a manner that we will not have this. Huh? Same. Right. So this is a story you can consider for that. Now you see, with knowledge, huh? so anything, whenever you, whenever you are doing a particular thing, first of all you have to observe the facts and figures. That is how the case study is given in order to read your mind. When a case study is given, you have to read it line by line and you have to understand it and underline the facts, first of all. That is the way you have to approach a case study. Already that day, Miss has also made some, you know, mistake that... This is how we make a mistake. We don't observe properly. When we don't observe properly, when we are in fear, definitely we will not understand what is given in that uh, paragraph. So, there should be a knowledge. When knowledge comes, knowledge will be there with everyone. But when we are in a stable mind, our knowledge will work in a proper manner. So, this point you have to know. With knowledge, uh, suppose an action is done with knowledge, that is without ignorance. Huh? There should not be any ignorance. Right? Without ignorance, it should be done without ignorance. Second point, ignorance is one of the impediment to human action. Uh, if you are considering ignorance, right, then it is very inter uh, interesting to share something with you related to ignorance. Suppose uh, in India, this word ignorance is existing, is, uh, you know, uh, present everywhere, we can say, hmm? omnipresent, ignorance. But particularly our uh, legislative body, the one who is sitting and making legislations, uh, they have enormous number of uh, the second fact. Uh, because you know, previously like one and one year before, one incident happened. In Tamil Nadu, there was drought everywhere. Huh? There was drought. So, the rivers and lake has been draining the enormous manner. So, what they did, uh, one of our minister, huh? uh, it's very shame to say, but we have to say this, one of our minister, uh, went there with uh, the PWD officials, think that, PWD officials and he went, uh, he is Mr. Uh, Selur, Selur Raja, he is called Selur Raja and he went there and the Vaige Dam, have you heard that? It is in Tamil Nadu, in geography you will be studying all this, huh? Vaige River is there, Vaige. Ah, yes, Vaige River, so there is a dam constructed over Vaige River, he went there uh, with this PWD officials and they went in a boat and they took lot number of thermocoles, you know, thermocoles where the false ceiling we use, na, the white color thermocoles. With that, they went and they were putting the thermocoles all over the Vaige Dam. You know, it will float. Huh? It's, it's weightless, right? So once they put and they come back, the thermocol also came back along with them. And the media asked them, why are you dropping thermocoles in the water? And he said, in order to avoid transpiration. Hmm? What is transpiration? Evaporation. Hmm, evaporation. Uh, the water is getting evaporated now because sun is there. To cover the dam, we are putting thermocoles. So your ministers, one who we are going to serve, will be like this. Right? So this is uh, ignorance. And the better way to say is that, when the, uh, you know, Tiware Dam. I hope so it's uh, Tehri Dam or Tiware Dam. So go and uh, verify. I don't remember properly. What happened there also? One of our ministers, hmm? 
that was an issue the dam, dam, dam was uh, the dam cracked leaked and a lot number of people died in that incident and when asked about that he said crabs are responsible for the crabs no living in the dam is responsible for crack in the dam uh, the crack, uh, crabs are responsible he said crabs the crustacean no? mm, crabs because the lot number of crabs crabs has increased in an enormous level that is why uh, they destroyed the dam and the dam broke and the water came out so this is how our ministers are uh, living uh, luxuriously and foolishly so with ignorance uh, if you are ignorant we can't call this ignorance we can call fool uh, so what we can say is that without knowledge that is why whenever whenever an ias officer is going to rectify some social evils which is happening in their district what they have to do is that first they have to survey the district when you are writing a case study you should remember always when they are they are descri describing some social evils na like uh, a suicide is happening a lot suicide is happening in this district because farmers drought is there farmer suicide is happening what measures you will suggest ha huh? same way like lot of so social evils will be described and they will ask you to give some measures first you have to say i will survive and study my district and then understand about the situation and then you have to give your options first you have to survey that is the first step you have to take because you have to first study without knowledge you cannot plan anything okay understood understood so when a human action is done with complete knowledge ha huh? with complete known everything the facts is known to him and then he is doing that action even though he knows that it is wrong because an ias officer know it is wrong to always collaborate with a, uh, a politician and then give a mining lease to a particular company which the politician owns that sand mining is happening in enormous level at various river banks he knows it is wrong because it is going to affect the livelihood of the people who is residing nearby the banks so even though he knows and he does it then definitely he he has to be evaluated under ethics ha huh? he has to be evaluated then come to the second one voluntarily done what is the meaning of this the, the action has to be done with the knowledge uh it should be voluntarily done and it should also be done with free will three things are there so second one is voluntarily done what is voluntarily done hmm willfully ah uh, then what is free will there should be some difference na uh. every time we always interchangeably use these terms ah uh. free will is to say without uh, any other external force hmm Mm. yeah that is right you are right but then voluntary is not that na no? so what is voluntary in our small classes we might have studied about i think he has asked some question for what he gave us i guess in number right see uh, so what you have to do is what i was saying i ah, yes voluntary right in small classes you might have studied about involuntary and voluntary actions ha huh? Uh, what is that? What is involuntary action? What is voluntary action? Ah, without knowing. Ah, cute. She has said without knowing. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> any other? Any other? It's like spontaneous. Okay. See. i will give uh, i will tell a small example for you then you will understand and you will tell what is voluntary and involuntary action okay so my daughter she don't live with me i have a daughter and uh, she is 6 uh, years old and she is very notorious for her activity mischievous one ah huh? so what we do we always go and chat with her in skype and uh, otherwise phone so one day i was calling her and she, uh, i was asking where is she and she was coughing continuously then i asked my mom what happened then she said she is always she always whenever it rains she go outside whatever i do she is not uh, listening to me because she is, she is my daughter na grandchild huh? they will always uh, uh, don't even tell anything to her you know uh, she is a pet of her pet of them so she gave the phone to me you advise her then i asked what happened i never advise her because we should not advise children that is the first thing we have to learn as a mother Uh, we should not advise children because they will advise us then what happens i asked her what happened huh? why are you coughing 
what happened to your sweet voice dear then she said you know mother uh, there was uh, there, there was raining uh, it was raining so i otherwise she will say no i didn't do my your mom is uh, telling lies she will tell like that to me and she said yes mom you know it was raining and it is very nice i want to play in the rain so what ha- what happened i was seeing but i know that you will scold me na so i don't want to go but my legs involuntarily you know it was voluntarily walking ah huh? it was voluntarily uh, sorry involuntarily i was walking towards the rain ah huh? involuntarily my leg was going like this i was coming back my leg was going i was coming back my leg was going then i said oh it's interesting na huh? interesting ah huh? uh, you're teaching me science right then so this is how now you understand i hope so voluntarily means it is under your control you are controlling some action you're controlling but involuntary means it is without your control that eye reflexes the more, the way you blink the eyes sneezing huh? then breathing thinking even thinking is involuntary you can't control your thoughts and that is why we are saying it has to be brought under voluntary you have to control through some means and mechanism so these are voluntary and involuntary difference between that and uh, with free will for this i will give an example the two combined we will take an example <clears throat> right so uh, if somebody is coming huh, and giving a gun to me hmm, giving giving a gun in my hand and he is saying that um, you have to shoot someone right you have to shoot someone if you shoot then uh, i will leave everybody everybody who is sitting in this region in this place with you so i am in the uh, let, let us consider like this i am in the bank so a person has entered into the bank and he said you have to kill the cashier okay otherwise i will shoot everyone who is sitting here huh? then at the moment he said if i am killing that cashier i am killing that cashier okay is what is this type of action without free will hmm without free will because somebody is pressurizing you and you are also voluntarily doing it because the control is in your hand okay the control but you are not you are not doing without you are not doing with free will without free will you are doing it but you are the control is in your hand so, and suppose he comes to you and even though you don't kill the person he comes and gives the gun in your hand and pulls the trigger okay the gun is in your hand but he pulls the trigger then it is an involuntary action because you didn't do it because it is not under your control and again you are not doing with free will okay suppose if you are deciding in the situation that right if he is giving a decision to you right if you kill the cashier everybody from here can escape it is up to you otherwise ah uh, he is not putting any pressure he is saying that this is the option i can also give some amount for you ah uh, you will become rich then now your brain starts to think then you, you either you may choose the right path or you may choose the wrong path now the free will is in with your hands and you can do the action voluntarily do you understand so this is a difference so you when a human action is performed with knowledge and with voluntariness uh, along with free will without any pressure in his mind then definitely the action has to be evaluated based on ethics ethical terms right so this is the first one we have to learn then then <coughs> you have to learn two things from voluntary voluntary there are two types of voluntariness ha huh? understood till this yes with your complete the complete control is in your hand that is voluntary you are controlling your actions ha huh? nobody is doing in your place so that is voluntary in this voluntary we are going to split this into two directly voluntary voluntary in cause two types of voluntary are there hmm this you will see in some other books as acts of double effect but you can't understand that what they are coming to say because they think as they if they confuse that is called ethics but you know you have to clarify you have to be in clear in your concept so voluntary in cause is sometimes called as acts of double effect so even if you go and read you can't remember what it is given there so first tell me what is directly voluntary and voluntary in cause mr tarun kumar good morning Have you heard this term anywhere? Does voluntary cause me to call? It starts voluntarily, but in effect, hmm. it is not voluntary. Hmm. 
right? It starts voluntary and in effect it's not voluntary. Might be said uh, he didn't want the desired consequences mm. to happen. Mm. But the consequences... But it happens. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, you are right. For example, we can take uh, a fighter pilot. Uh, fighter pilot. Let us consider this person. He will always come under to this, this and the doctor we can say. Right? Uh, suppose, two examples we can take. Then you will understand better. A fighter pilot is there. Okay, now he has to destroy the enemy army camp. Enemies army base is there. He has to go and destroy the... Suppose A is there. A has to go and destroy the B's army camp huh? army base or military base is there he has to go and destroy that now he is the fighter pilot now the plan was given to him the army base is always located in some district or some places where the residents civilians also will be there no? innocent civilians will also be residing in that area now he has to drop bombs and then kill uh, the sorry then destroy the complete army base now this pilot knows that the, uh, the action which he is going to perform is only destroying the army base but when he is doing this action, definitely there is some side effect that the innocent civilians will also get killed. Eh? Innocent civilians will also get killed in it, right? Am I right or not? Wrong. Uh, so he knows that, right? He knows that, that definitely the civilians will also be get killed. But he can't, he can't help with it. This is nothing but a double effect. One thing, the main aim of him is to destroy the army, military, cantonment area. Otherwise, what happens? Then the ace country will be affected. Huh? They will, they will uh, target the ace country. In order to protect his country, his duty is to destroy the military camp of B near the border area. But at the same time, he knows that if he does it, there will be definitely a loss to innocent civilians also. But he has to do it. This is called voluntary incas. Same way, yesterday we were discussing about the doctor, na? Uh, Savita Halapanavar case. Uh, suppose that woman is under complications and if she is in India, definitely she would have been aborted because she was under 20 weeks of uh, her pregnancy. So when, it, when, when you are a doctor, if she comes to you, she knows, uh, you know that you have to perform the surgery to Savita uh, in order to help her. Okay, you are going to perform the surgery in order to save her, uh, in order to save her. But also you know that there is a second effect. If you perform the surgery, the child will get killed. Huh? Right? Hmm. So this is voluntary in cause. This is occurring voluntary in cause. You know the effect. It is not happening without your knowledge. You know when you are doing this, this will definitely happen. But you, even though you know the effect, you have to perform that in order to protect someone or in order to protect a country. So this is what which is happening with our uh, military people as well as the doctors who are performing their duties. And uh, you can also say if, uh, share any experience if you know. So this is these are examples for voluntary and in, in cause. And directly voluntary is nothing but directly the person, the doer is doing the action. That is called directly voluntary. Okay. Do we understand? Understand? Still this? Huh? Done? Done? Right. So, we will complete the impediments. Impediments also we can give us points. Impediments. Uh, from this area, you know, always UPC will ask from the consequences and negative sides or the, what are the thing which has to be filled up. All the, uh, from uh, that part, you know, the questions will arise. So, impediments to human action only, the questions will mostly be targeted. In that, I already told, two times question has appeared. One is the Gandhiji quote is there. Again, you can, you go and verify the long back, that there was a direct question. Right, uh, what are the impediments which is happening towards the human action? The question was like that. So, you know, uh, first we wrote, uh, what are the points we have taken? Ignorance we have taken, right? First one is uncontrollable, uncontrollable emotions. Uh, so, what are emotion? This is a separate chop chapter for you. Emotional intelligence is there for you. Huh? Emotional intelligence, you have to study that. When you are crossing the chapter, you will be a full mature person. How you have to control your emotion, you know that. So, uncontrollable emotions. Okay. So, what are the uncontrollable emotions? You can give some example for that. Like uh, fear, anger, uh, depressions. You know, the f there are seven emotions, basic emotions. From that, there are uh, sub-emotions which, 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 which we derive. Okay. Depressions. Depression, sadness, sad. Uh, okay. All these things you can say uncontrollable emotions then you can also write pathological states uh, what is pathological state 
anyone yes diseases ha huh? right any type of disease dementia ha huh? like that okay if a doctor is present we can ask what are the diseases ha huh? which makes a human not to act like a human one such thing is dementia forgetfulness is there then you can also take one more thing that is habits habit for some people that it might be a habit they will be like that even though they know it is wrong they will perform that you know because they can't leave their ego their habit systems which they practice for a very long time and you, it is very hard to change a habit and uh, you know that is why there is a behavior change strategy which is this is going on do you hear, have you heard this word whenever a scheme is formed nowadays they are saying you have to first change the uh, first change the behavior of the people behavior change strategy uh, mm. uh, for, to change the behavior na no? first of all you have to create the awareness then you have to change the behavior which the people is performing as habits for a very long time even though you construct a toilet for them they say we feel very refreshed when we go outside ha huh? so this is a habit which they have for a very long time we have to change it so these are the things these are the impediments we can call um, when we are doing a human action like this Hmm? you can also add if you have any more you can also add violence all those things violence okay that is called intolerance the question also appeared violence violence the basic cause for violence is intolerance if you say intolerance na hmm. not only the caste based violence recently a news also appeared in the newspaper what happened there was a fight for parking parking lot fight was there in delhi this is happening nowadays ah uh, noida na everywhere in karol bag in rajendranagar if you go they will park in two sides of the road and you have to travel in the middle of the road ah uh, only less space na like warm we have to cross the street so in noida there was a fight for parking and all and uh, case was also filed see so the, this is intolerance people can't tolerate because that was a shop somebody has come and parked this bike and he is not able to tolerate that this person has par- parked a bike in front of my Uh, shop and he started fighting okay so these are the impediments to human action we can say right done shall we take the notes then we'll move to the next one yesterday till which we have completed where we have stopped yesterday values, values na so you have uh, just take a tabular column for values and ethics the difference between values and ethics then start this one values tabular column huh? now we are taking notes students we are taking notes i just camera okay so you have to take a tabular column now we are going to differentiate ethics and values so first in first column write values second ethics okay so values ethics first point it's a set of individual principles and our values it is set of individual principles individual principles it is a set of universal moral and ethics it is a set of universal moral principles and ethics it is a set of universal moral principles universal moral principles and the value second point it varies from person to person it varies from person to person and the ethics standard standard they are standard principles third point and the values it determines what is important first it determines what is important first and the ethics it determines what is right first what is right what is right first okay is right first hmm 
which one this, uh, what is important ah, what is ah, yes values na when why you are having value systems in your life because you want to know uh, you want to achieve your goal right for that you are going to prioritize your values and you are having the value systems in order to help you achieving the goal so you know what is important in your life first for that only you are having the values but in ethics whenever you are performing an action they are not going to talk on behalf of the goal or the aim or the destination where you are going to reach they are going to assess you whether this act you have performed is right or wrong okay so values will help you to identify what is your goal uh, which is important in your life according to that according to your preferences only your values also varies i also said it varies from uh, stages also the from the early childhood then adolescence then when you are matured peoples and the val value systems varies na keep on varying based on the goals and the importance in your life but ethics is not like that it is a standard principles and whenever you are performing any act it will assess whether it is right or wrong okay do you understand now come to the today's area so we'll take some human actions or huh? human actions in that i hope you have done that diagram na no? you done ah uh, you have done it so we need not dictate that but take this one in ethics under actions ah huh? in ethics in ethics we are going to speak about no not tabla come finished now we are going to speak about the actions na no? uh, human actions human actions again we have to do it but this is a short definition which we are going to take then then we will do it in the elaborate manner so human actions so the types of action the types of action which we are going to speak about with related to ethics okay speak about with related to ethics means how which action we are going to evaluate that is the meaning related to ethics first one first one it is human actions it is human actions it is human actions and not first point in that it is human actions it is human actions human actions and not any animal oriented actions it is human actions and not any animal oriented actions animal oriented actions second point second point it should be a deliberate it should be it should be a deliberate deliberate human action it should be a deliberate human action so you can write in the bracket act as humanus act as humanus act as humanus and not undeliberate human action and not undeliberate human action actions this we call as act as hominis actus hominis then the triangle diagram you have done so you, you know you need not take anything but write something for a voluntary directly voluntary and voluntary in cas okay do the heading directly voluntary under voluntary we split it that into two na directly voluntary another one is voluntary in cas under directly voluntary huh? an action is directly voluntary an action is directly voluntary they doing it directly directly voluntary directly voluntary when when the actor the actor a c t u r when the actor when the actor wills the action when the actor wills actor wills the action for himself wills the action for himself wills the action for himself or as a means to an end wills the action for himself or as a means to an end 
to an end. On the other hand, on the other hand, voluntary incas, we are going to write about voluntary incas. Voluntary incas means, other hand, voluntary incas means that the action, that the action, that the action is not directly willed, is not directly willed, W-I-L-L-E-D, for its own sake, for its own sake, own sake, but arises from, okay, but arises from, arises from another action, arises from another action, directly willed, directly willed. W I L L E D directly will arises from another action directly will okay full stop and continue an action is voluntary in cause note underline that sentence once you complete done an action is voluntary in cause if the actor the action an action is voluntary in cause if the actor if the actor Forces, F O R E S E E S, forces, the actor forces that it will result from, that it will result from, result from another action, that it will result from another action directly willed. Another action directly willed. For that you can give an example, otherwise you will forget over the period. Right? You can write a fighter pilot dropping bomb over the enemy military camp or military area, in that innocent civilians will get killed. Uh, you can uh, just draw a diagram if you want like that. Uh, then you will remember it, otherwise you will forget. Just note that example down. Okay, So underline that last line. It should be the, the doer, that is the one who is performing the action, should know that this will happen if he does that. This is why when you are writing a case study, you have to use that particular keyword. Voluntary in cast, na? whenever you are choosing any option, it might be A option or it might be a B option or it might be a C option. Whenever you are choosing, you're choosing it, there will be positive consequences as well as a negative consequence for that action, option. You have to choose the less among all the evils when you are choosing it. And you have to say, when we are performing this action, there is a voluntary in cause that this will happen because a collector, a district collector, you, has to know that what will happen in the future. Without that, you can't say to the minister, sorry, I didn't uh, uh, know that this will happen when I perform this act. You are zero then. Okay. When you are performing the act, you should know, sir, I know that if I perform this option, A, then these are the side effects which we get. These are the negative consequences uh, uh, that it will turn out like this. But comparable to the plan B, plan C, plan D, plan A is having a less negative consequences. So, I am going to opt for plan A. This is voluntary in cause. You are predicting that if you are performing this action, this will happen definitely. Okay. So, this is how when you are writing your answers, you have to mention those words. That is why we are giving definitions for you here. Hmm? So, you will fetch more marks in your answer, in your exams when you are doing that. Now, we will go, go to the next topic. Till this you understand, right? Ah. So, we will go to the next topic. Ethics and uh, religion. Now I have written the topic. Now you people are going to enlighten me with what the knowledge you have. Huh? So you are going to speak now. Right. Before that, let me uh, explain a small topic, ethics and uh, morality. Always you know these two words are used interchangeably everywhere. Then you may get confused. Is that the both are same? Whenever, wherever, because in 2015 when I was going... Uh, uh, you know, for various academy, when I was uh, starting my career, uh, you know, my husband is very poor and this. he will never support me and he will never speak for me. Uh. He say you have to go and you have to look for your own opportunities. That is good. That is right. He is definitely right, 100%. So, I also never seek his uh, uh, help. 
So when I was going, the first question they used to ask me is that, what is the difference between ethics and morality to me? In interview also this question was asked. What is the difference between ethics and morality? Uh, you are saying you are going to teach ethics. What is the difference? Previously, everybody thought that this is the same word which is used interchangeably. Yes, they are right. We are using them interchangeably, but there is a slight difference, you know. This is, if this is ethics, right, then we can call this is morality. What is the meaning of this then? Have you studied Venn diagrams in your uh, C set? Hmm. You have still, you have C set, huh? you will remember. So what is the meaning of this? Mm, it's a subset of ethics. Means morality is nothing but a principles. A group of principles are called as morality. Set of principles which we have to follow. But ethics is not only a set of principles. It is nothing but a moral philosophy. Ethics is a branch. Moral philosophy. It includes everything. The set of moral principles. Okay. Then problems. Ethical problems. Theories. philosophy, ethical theories we can call, huh? then solutions, everything, everything completely, it's a complete wholesome, wholesome one is called as ethics and it's it, the morality is nothing but a part of ethics, but anyhow whenever we are uh, uh, keep on, uh, we are traveling uh, far ahead in ethics, we always use morality in the place of ethics, it's not a fault, you can use it, okay. Instead of saying ethically true, you can say it is morally right. Yesterday also we saw ethically right or wrong or morally right or wrong. Okay. You can use interchangeably, but there is this little difference. This is the difference. If somebody asks you, you can tell. Then come ethics and religion. This is what we have to see. So now enlighten me, students. Huh? Uh, the online students also let them wake up. It's early morning now. Huh? Ha ah, ah. ha, good, good. So one point we got. Any other point? Ethics is universal. Hmm, ethics is universal. Religion is not universal. We follow religion to make people understand the value of ethics. Hmm, it's right. You know, uh, whenever we are speaking about ethics and religion, there are two groups. Always, if you know philosophers are there, there will be always a fight. Uh, even uh, other people, you do, you leave it. If the philosophers are there, na, all are uh, genius. Huh? You can't uh, object the ideas of one philosopher and you can't cross it with the other one. You can't say you are wrong and you are right. So whenever uh, philosophers are there, some groups will be in one side and some groups will be in the other side. Some group of philosophers that say that huh, ethics is nothing but... It have a grounding. It has grounding in religion. You know, it has it is it has a base in religion. From religion only ethics came. This was the argument which was kept by some philosophers. And since some philosophers say that no philosophical ethics, ethics is nothing but a philosophy subject. Na we said moral philosophy. It's a philosophical, sophical ethics, and it does not have any grounding or base in religion. And it comes from reasons and experiences okay this is the two different uh, uh, two different opinion and views which is uh, prevailing there in the field and if you know for this let me tell uh, some examples which you have to know right uh, lastly we will conclude so in this for some examples when we are giving because the questions are appearing like this ethics and law ethics and this 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 that that's how they will ask a question so far, no ethics and religion has not been asked. Sometimes they may ask in the different format. So that's why I am giving some points so that you can use it when, when the question appears. So what happens, um, you know, like uh, I will tell an incident, a small incident which happened. Uh, so I already told I had a daughter and she was there living in abroad huh, with my parents. So what happens once she come to India, I took her to our place, state, na, Tamil Nadu. So, you know, the weather is varying, na, completely there is different. The weather is totally different. And she got uh, seriously ill. She was she fell ill, and now I want to take her to some doctor. But my mom suggested that you take uh, to some tribal community people, so that um, they have some herbs with them. They will cure very easily. And uh, ah yes, good, okay. 
So they are defining now. Huh? So what happens? Uh, she told that you have to take to them and they will give some herbal medicines which will help to cure the disease. Huh? Then I also, because she is my mother, I have to definitely hear and I took her there. And the moment we went there, uh, they are tribal community. Uh, you have to study about tribes. At least two questions will be there in preliminary related to tribes. And in mains also you will have questions related to tribes, okay? So it's a part. So what happens? Uh, they, they, you know the Narikurava community. They live in Tamil Nadu. This is a tribal community. Last year current affairs also they appeared. Uh, they, they, perform, uh, they will uh, uh, do some tattoos. Okay, they will uh, naturally using some herb, herbs, they are doing some tattoos for very long ago. It's a, this is a tradition. They don't use like in the color tattoos which you go here, na? They are printing in your body. The color tattoos using some chemicals. Not like that. They use some herbs here. So what happened? I took them, uh, took her to Narikurava community, na? This particular place. And you know the head lady of that community was there and she came and uh, I was talking with her and she said, uh, first when she interacted with me, she asked, what happened to your grandchild? I felt very bad. What? Am I looking very old? She is asking me, grandchild, and I, I got humiliated, and a lot of humiliation was there, and I, I doesn't know about them properly. So I said, uh, no, yeah, yeah, she is, she is ill, because I can't, I am, I am mother, na. It's, it's again very humiliation for me. Then I said, yes, she is very ill, uh, please check and do some medicines. Then she was checking my daughter, and uh, then you said, no, see, uh, you should, you should uh, give home medicines for her, and you should not talk, take to doctor, because her body will become very weak. And uh, she kept on, kept on advising me. And you, you know, I have 20 children. Huh? I am mother of 20 children. And I am very proud. And every children of me is very healthy. And uh, she also had a child. At that age, she had a child. She was 45 years old. She had a child. Uh, two years old child. And her daughter also had the child at the same time. Both, are, both were there. I asked I felt very bad. Huh? Now I, I thought I will definitely ask her today. Uh, to, now I have to ask her and I asked her because she insulted me na. women are like that now once if somebody insulted us we have to insult them back that is our character huh? this definitely we have to give back then I thought don't you feel shame you also have a daughter and your daughter is also having a daughter and both are playing together and uh, you say you are 45 years and it's a grandchild and you also have a child she became very angry na. she threw the herbs that side and she said get out <laughs> get out how dare you speak about my family lineage huh? Uh, see, if you are talking like this, your grandchild will never get married. You will not have any family lineage. That, that will be get broken. Then I felt very bad. Okay, she cursed me, literally. She cursed me and this is God's gift. How will you sp speak like that? Huh? How dare you speaking against God's gift? Even now people are like that. Okay, so she said it is God's gift. Huh? God is giving. We will accept it until he gives. Okay, divine command theory. Divine command theory. Whenever you are mentioning about some social evils which is prevailing, uh, they will give an excuse to you like this. God said that. And uh, you know, another example I can give, like when we were traveling to Rajasthan, um, because for my NGO activity, I hear that there is a district which they don't even uh, have a proper basic uh, awareness about the menstrual cycle. Because it's, it's our own. The NGO which we are running is mainly taking care of the menstrual uh, hygiene, you no, know, of women. So, uh, after hearing that we went, and you know, I am very poor in Hindi. I also don't know to speak. And when we went there, we took a proper uh, local guide from there. And uh, one of her student, who was a doctor there in the, uh, you know, the border area with Pak, Pakistan. And so he he came and helped us. And when we were interacting with that ladies, you know, they what they do is that they never use anything in order to uh, in during that period, the menstrual cycle. What they do is that they will take the sand. Make a mud, sit over that for three days. I feel very bad. What is this? What habit? I never have seen this. Think the thing. See, we can laugh, we can do anything, but think the uh, health of that women. What will happen to these people? A huh? lot of insects will be there in the sand, and how much poor hygiene they are into it. Huh? I was there three days. I said, I will never go from here until unless you take this from me and you start using it. I will never leave this place. And I was there staying. We were there outside the village. They didn't allow us inside also. So, this is how the people, they say, when, when we inquired, na, they were saying that it is God given. Na. God has given. It should be like natural and it should flow downward and you should not stop with anything else. They are thinking we are stopping. 
so this is how the people still living in india in some corner of the uh, india you can find people like this okay even here also you can find the people uh, serving lassi and all na no? lassi that juices uh, when during one period they will do so i also felt happy when the moment i saw this uh, still there are some good people are there uh, people are coming and people the hungry people are fed and you know the uh, water is served to them but when you ask to them they will say spiritual charity na these words you can use you should use for your essays or uh, questions spiritual charity what is spiritual charity spiritual charity Mm. charity charity means you are doing some altruism altruistic uh, behavior is performed by you but you are performing based mainly because god will get a peace and he will give you wealth that is called spiritual charity people here they are serving people other people because they believe that once you do that god will get a peace huh? they will he will feel happy and he will bless with wealth and prosperity for your family that is that is called spiritual charity this is not charity at all charity means what your left hand gives your right, right hand does should not know it that is called charity this we still follow, follow in our kingdom the great chola kingdom what happens till now we used to feed a uh, n number of people whoever comes to our house has to leave should not leave with the empty stomach either they eat or they does not eat we don't care if they come they have to eat in our place then they will leave and they will never speak a word that we are doing this we are doing that we will never tell that whoever comes and asks something na we have to give it that is the the thing which we follow this is spiritual charity now we getting converted into ritual charity uh, ritual charity previously at least they thought okay god is watching we have to do it now they don't even know the grandsons of those people don't even know why my forefather has that did this but as a ritual i am doing it uh, they have done this so i am also doing it this ritual so spiritual charity got converted into ritual charity all these things are happening so with the ethics and religion philosophers like immanuel kant this is a very important person ah huh? when ah uh, whenever you are writing kant kantism is there but whenever you are writing ethics you should not forget forget about him immanuel kant <coughs> kant he said that god is the basic necessity of ethics means religion is the basic necessity of ethics from religion only ethics is started derived because when a mother Ah, uh, is telling. Suppose, let me ask a question. Frankly, you have to say, when you are very young, ah, uh, so, uh, the when you start to play, what your mother used to say, if you are not sharing your things with other, uh, the neighbors' children or the friends, she used to say something, na, that you, no, no, child, this is a very bad habit. You have to share your things with others. Ah, uh, otherwise, if the God will watch you, ah, uh, then if you are telling lies, also she will say the same thing. Don't tell lies. God is watching you, na. Night, he will come and pierce your eyes. Ah, uh, then what the child will do? Child become very fearful because he believes the mother, na. Nowadays they are not believing. That is the other case. But the the child believes the mother. Oh, mother is telling na. God will come and he will pierce with the uh, sword or something which he ca- carries in his hand. Uh, the my eyes. If I tell lies, so I should not tell lies. Okay, because first thing a mother is teaching an ethical value to a child only through the threat. of religion from the face of religion from the face of god that is why immanuel kant said that god is the basic necessity of religion although we believe that uh, nowadays the philosophers are saying that even the philosophical ethics has nothing to do with the religion it is it comes from mere reasons that we are going to experience something in our life from that we are going to study something and that is called from that we are going to frame a ethical values that is called reason say experience because if i am going to beat you you are going to feel the pain then that is wrong i am causing harm to you so that, that is how this is a experience now you are feeling an experience through, through this experience only the ethical values can be framed and not through the basic of religion but now in india and in every country we are accepting that religion is the cornerstone of ethics okay right now you take some notes related to ethics and religion then we will move to the next topic ethics and religion so then and there when we are writing it will be easy otherwise you will also forget and i also will forget to give okay right? take some three four points related to ethics and religion then we will study about the some moral terms here ethics and religion take down many people it's very hard i hope so ethics and religion under that many people get there 
many people, people so we are yes they are also answering us so tarun ji is giving the committee green mall he has done and tanuj is good hmm. okay he is given social conformity a new word hmm. so sociology students should definitely know this ha huh? social conformity i hope so somebody said sociology here what is social conformity enlighten us Okay, these types of words are keywords, which you call keywords, which you have to use in your answers, right? So, write the point. Many people get their ethical or moral views, ethical or moral views, ethical or moral views. Many people get their ethical or moral views from their religion, from their religion. Okay, ethical or moral views from their religion. Example, you can write that eight principles of Buddhism. my god eight principles of buddhism ha huh? eight principles of buddhism she is opposing our view and 10 commandments of 10 uh, commandments in christianity bhagavad gita ha huh? all those things you can put whatever you wish inside ha huh? right so second one some religions second point some religions recognize some religions recognize some religions recognize and river r e v e r e r e v e r e so what's the meaning of this deep respect giving a deep respect for people so some religion recognize and river saints are holy people saints are holy people saints are holy people saints are holy people who provide models for us who provide models for us saints are holy people who provide models for us models for us and exemplify 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 means what being an example ah huh? exemplify try to use some new words in your answers that will help you hmm? exemplify f y exemplify means being an example ha huh? exemplify virtues v a r t u e s virtues we should emulate we should emulate emulate virtues means what the moral principles only emulate we should emulate emulate means what imitating we should imitate those ha huh? the prince the buddha if you take buddha buddha has lived to his word what he preached he lived accordingly so we have to take that as an example and we have to follow it they are saying yeah? he also prescribed some ethical principles for us na no? uh, he lived in the same way so we have to follow the footsteps of him like that many people are there we have to follow them next philosophers philosophers next point third philosophers however believe that however however believe that however believe that ethics however believe that ethics does not ethics does not philosophers however believe that ethics does not philosophers however believe that ethics does not necessarily ethics does not necessarily ethics does not necessarily require require ethics does not necessarily require a religious grounding ethics does not require necessarily require a religious grounding okay religious grounding full stop okay. in fact in fact continue in fact even those people in fact even those people in fact come on, even uh, those people for whom even those people for whom in fact even those people for whom morality is for whom morality is whom w h o m whom morality is religiously based for whom morality is religiously based whom morality is religiously based religiously based may want to examine may want to examine may want to examine some of these views some of these views v i e w s views using reason 
some of these views using reason using reason you can put and say the bracket philosophical ethics says that philosophical ethics is saying that reasons are the basic grounding for ethics okay reasons and experience so philosophical ethics you can write in bracket but last point you can conclude even though even though even though the experiences and reasons even though experiences and reasons helps in helps in framing sorry helps in identifying and framing right like that identifying and framing helps in identifying and framing set of moral principles set of moral principles set of moral principles we cannot deny the fact we cannot deny the fact we cannot deny the fact that we cannot deny the fact that we cannot deny the fact that okay deny the fact that religion is one of the religion is one of the religion is one of the primary basic source religion is one of the primary basic source basic source from where from where, where from where ethical principles religion is one of the primary basic source from where ethical principles are derived ethical principles are derived understood then okay so now we will go to the important topic we will do complete it then we will take the notes so there are two topics remaining i already said the first topic we have to see and there are some terms related to ethics which you have to know okay <coughs> like see these are the ethical terms which you have to understand first ethical skepticism ethical skepticism okay let me check this again all right okay. ethical skepticism then second one ethical subjectivism okay third ethical these are these are the keywords which you have to use ethical relativism fourth ethical objectivism this is further you can divide this into universalism okay another one is absolutism a realism is also there all you have to give ethical realism ethical universalism ethical absolutism because absolutism has to be studied separately so we are writing here again ethical absolutism this is further divided into two sub absolutist subjectivist okay absolutist objectivist these are mere definitions whenever you take any book they will just give a definition and you can't even remember that now we will explain each and everything with the example so that you will remember that better and i will give the definition for you to take down huh? later so what is what is ethical skepticism from the name anyone yes ethical skepticism ethical skepticism ethical subjectivism ethical relativism have you heard this word anywhere ha huh? yes no, you will not hear 
but is there in your ethics and everywhere in any any book when you go into the market walk into the market see any ethics book they will have this so these are the basic terms you have to understand when you touch a ethics book the ethical skepticism means what they say is that still now we are saying that this ethics is nothing but a set of moral principles people who are ethically skeptic they will ask is there anything like moral principles is existing which you are saying it is universally existing now they will ask you whether is there any existing like that is it true it is true that they will always be skeptic huh they will question you that is that true even if that exists it is reliable or not so this these are called ethical skepticism always doubting huh they does not believe in the universal ethical principles which is existing which we speak about then come to ethical subjectivism ethical subjectivism means so ethical skepticism means we'll go slowly because they also has to follow us ethical skepticism means always you are doubting the existing moral principles anything any theory if you say they will be skeptic about it they will say whether it is true or not we don't believe it god ah uh, is he there they will ask like that okay the moral principles is it there who gives that who says that that is that is the universal moral principles so always doubting the existing moral principles this is called ethical skepticism then ethical subjectivism <coughs> ethical subjectivism what is ethical subjectivism it's subjective to one person mm. or which might not which be very from person to person mm. Mm. yeah that is what is equal to values these people believe that there is no universal moral principles as you say okay there is universal you are see, saying that there is a prescription of moral principles which is given which has to be followed universally by everyone no such thing is there no such nonsense each and every person is having his own ethical values within himself and that is nothing but the moral principles for him that is called ethical subjectivism according to her killing might be a right because she might belong to some tribal community which kills people head hunters you know sentinels recently they made news also na sentinel is where they belong uh, mm. tribes from andaman and nicobar you have to remember the tribes because they it will appear as questions for you there are some six tribes in andaman and nicobar one of them is sentinelis same way there is jaravas they also made a news onjas is there great andamanis is there great nicobaris is there great andamanis are very mutual huh? they they are uh, you know social sociable we can say like this sociable people they will always talk to you if you interact they will talk but the other peoples are not like that and particularly the sentinels are very angry people they doesn't like humans at all so whenever you go to their island they will shot arrows at you they are head hunters huh kill you kill you definitely you will be get killed if you want to do suicide you can go there the island of sentinels huh and he recently a foreigner also went and he came back as a dead person so i hope he was approaching death na he thought i have to do suicide so he came from his country and he went to sentinels to see that directly and he got killed so uh, you know ethical subjectivism says that this is right according to me okay this is according to my culture this is right and i am going to follow it there is no anything such that moral universal principles i never believe in that so this is called as ethical subjectivism ethical relativism it is speaking about the relative ethical concepts that each and every culture is unique and special so each and every one has their own ethical principles and it varies according to the culture ah huh? ethical subjectivism means according to one person that each and every person is having his va- values value systems and it varies from person to person even within the culture but ethical relativism is saying that sentinel is complete the tribe we are saying na the tribe is having some moral principles that they say this is right same way there is a tribe called konyak where they are a uh, sociology student please uh remember ah uh, you have to go and prepare all these things if you are a sociology you, there is a separate thing na for you tribes i hope so yes konyak tribe are from nagaland they are uh, called as head hunters they are also head hunters now they have left the left that uh, you know the designation of head hunters what they will do is that Uh, if we have enemies now what we will do if we have enemies we will beat them we will curse them we will scold them that's it but these people will slash their head and hang the head in front of the house how many heads they are having that is a proud moment for them you know so these these people are like that violent head hunters one time they resided in nagaland and even now they hunt buffaloes buffaloes according to them killing buffaloes is right okay they say uh, it's feast for feast they will kill uh, buffalo if they want to facilitate someone they will kill buffalo because they have to show the respect to the other person so they will hang the buffalo head head, head in front of the house previously it was human head now buffalo head that's it they replace it with buffalo head 
previously they will hang human head so now they are hanging buffalo head how many buffalo heads a person is having according to his status also increases so what they do is that but at the same time todas have you heard about todas uh, who are they uh, in nilgiri mountain in tamil nadu you can see this people uh, this people worship buffaloes or ship buffalo so there is a variation this is called ethical relativism they say you should not kill any life okay you should not kill any organisms like buddha's principles but this people say it is uh, nothing except human will eat everyone so this is the difference you have uh, harming no people is only for todas harming no organisms but for konyak it is not like that so this is called ethical relativism according to their culture there is some principles which they are accepting okay they don't believe in the universal moral principles right for example you can also take jaravas jaravas came in exam also in a upsc preliminary exam you go and take the question paper and see they were asking which national highway is passing through the jarava in her habitation the question was like this who will dream that a national highway will be asked upsc nowadays they are asking very direct facts also in preliminary paper they were asking that mangalyan mission uh, how much uh, payload was sent Uh, through mangala mission and all so you have to know that this much kg was lifted and this uh, it was sent back uh, sent to the space so the, like this question was appearing they also asked what is the national highway which was passing through the jarava habitation because it made a news and court also said that you have to close that uh, national highway because what happened the jara you know like jungle safari have you went for jungle safari uh, what they will do lion safari is there elephant safari is there elephant safari lion safari you can go but lion safari they will take you in the elephant and they will show the lion and they will call this as a lion safari same way what they did is that human safari was practiced there in the jarawa in habitation area what they did is that they will go in vehicle they will stop the vehicle there park the vehicle there this is what you do na when you are doing lion safari they will take you in a vehicle they will stop the vehicle there and the lions will be there the lions will come near the vehicle they will see you then you will see them you will take pictures and all and you will uh, love it same way in jarawa habitation what they did is that they will go and park the vehicle uh, the jarawa habitation the jarawa tribes these people innocent people though who, these people don't wear dresses they used to come near the vehicle and same way as you treat the animal the people used to throw biscuits throw you know the f- uh, foods fruits everything to this people and because of the drought and the ch- i already yesterday we were discussing that due to the climate change these people are getting affected they don't get proper food so they come to the road and then these people are treated like animals by uh, us we uh, humans and since they don't wear dress also they also ask them to uh, misa tribe africa they drink <laughs> misa tribe huh? yes i also heard about it so what they do so they used to uh, make them dance and take uh, videos of these ja- tribes and then they enjoy so this people so this is what the jaravas uh, completely that national highway was closed they said no humans has to cross that highway because this is human safari is happening the supreme court gave the order okay so these things which came and then that appeared as news also whenever i am giving extra information try to note it because these are the questions which is which has already appeared and will appear okay so tribes there is definitely a question for you then come for the ethical objectivism when i am saying about ethical relativism i am saying that e- according to each and every culture the ethical values will vary ethical objectivism if you see this they believe that there is some universal moral principles which is equally applicable to everyone that is called as ethical objectivism in that there is a version you know this is a lighter version this is a stronger version this is the most stronger version we say na like that we are splitting it into universalism realism then absolutism is the complete strongest and heaviest version of objectivism in universalism they say that there is some moral principles which is applicable for the similar people equally applicable for the similar i will give definition don't worry i am just saying you, you have to observe it right i am giving examples similar like if you are in the same situation like me then that will be applicable okay if suppose let us take like this somebody is coming to kill me okay somebody is coming to kill you then what i will do i i have to do a self defense no i will harm him i will at least beat him so that he collapses so i am not get killed you all will you will also do the same thing but according to the universal moral principles what they say is that you should not harm other people how can you accept it similarly placed people 
will go for the similarly placed universal moral principles which is applicable. This is a lighter version of ethical objectivism. That is why they accepted for it. If you come to realism, they say there is a true, you know, there is, there is existing some true facts, true universal principles which is applicable irrespective of the belief each and everyone is having. For example, eugenics. What is the meaning of this? Ah, we also asked about social conformity. We left it. Social conformity is nothing but once uh, the groupism, you know, the group. We are doing some activity in order to get admitted into a group. Like wearing the same color dress. If you are not wearing, then they will alienate you. Social conformity, uh, you want conformity within the group. Same way, you have to behave according to the society in order to be accepted by the society. Okay, you, have, you should not say, no, no, I will not respect the elders, I will not touch the feet of elders. If you are not doing it, what they will do? This child is disobedient. Okay, he don't know how to respect the elders. He don't know how to respect the elders. So, you will be alienated by your people itself. So, social conf for social conformity, many people are performing certain acts. Right. Where we were, eugenics. What is eugenics? Uh, it's related to some genetic features, huh? So, eugenics. Already yesterday we were talking about Hitler, na? Hitler be believed in eugenics. Hitler thought that there are certain genes, uh, which which is which is which is required in order to produce the, you know, the high breed genes. They say without any fault, genes without any fault. He said that only those genes has to be bred in order to bring in the superior breed. Like horse, na? we do a horse, dog and all. What they do is that they will select a superior breed, superior genes. Then they will breed the same thing he thought, he told about humans also. Humans has also to be selected like that. Others who are incapable has to be gasified and killed. So is it true? This is a belief to him. According to him, this is a belief of him. But there is a universal moral principle na, that survival of the fittest is natural theory. You, can, you are not one who has the right to decide who has to live and who should not live. Survival of the fittest. Who gave this? Charles Darwin. Charles, Charles Darwin. What he said? He said that uh, they inherently there are populations who tend to get expanded mm. because of the natural right to reproduce mm. more mm. and more. As a result of they the, will also, competition, uh, the competition. The competition. Uh, yes. Once competition comes because of mm. other adverse uh, Yes. Uh, those unfit, unfit, unfit will yeah get eliminated. Ah, uh, yeah, very good, very good. So this is how when you are writing your exams, you have to be very clarifying your concept. So this is eugenics. This Hitler believed it. Even though Hitler believed it, we can't say this is true. There is some universal moral principles which is equally applicable to everyone. That realism is saying. Absolutism is the last concept which you have to know. Absolutist is saying that. Yeah, there is some, you know, the, we are splitting this into two, absolute is subjectivist. They say, yes, there are some moral universal principles, universally applicable to everyone, commonly, but they say it arises, it does not arise from the, uh, from any other world or some God has given those principles. It arises from each and everyone's heart. Okay, you know, you also know, you also know that we should not tell lies. Uh, telling lie is harming us and harming the other person. So you, you know that, that we should not tell lie. It is, it, your heart knows that, that the innocence know that, your conscience also says you that, that you should not do it. So this is the origin place of those moral principles which is equally applicable to everyone. So they say that, right? So whenever you are feeling a pain, that is wrong. And whenever you are feeling happy, that is right. Uh, don't consider the psycho and sadist here. They are different. We can't take that. Absolute is subjectivist. Absolute subjectivist saying that, no, no, there is a universal moral principle which transcends the physical world. That is, it is coming from some other uh, place, you know. They, they say there is a hell and heaven existing there. And from there, they have given some moral principles or order. And it is universally applicable to everyone. That is why I already told they are like terrorists. They say, God has given some moral principles. Religion is equal to ethics. Ethics equal to religion. God has given some principles and that has to be followed by everyone, each and every one of us. Without questioning him. So these are the concepts of ethics. Then we will go to our topic. So with this we are completing the introduction. Uh, the first topic we will go, right? Realism. Realism is saying that there are some moral principles that can be given by a philosopher, thinker, uh, anyone. But absolutism is saying that one absolutism, absolutist subjectivist is saying that these principles are arising from each and everyone's heart. 
human mind you may have the same thought she may have the same thought if i if i am asking that you have to beat somebody will you beat no because you know when you are beating the person will feel pain so it is wrong so you know that he also know that she also know that so this is a universal belief that you know that because through experiences you are uh, something you are experiencing and through this you understand that is why they say each and every person is the origin source for principles and that principles completely collaboratively called as universal moral principle which is applicable to everyone and everyone is ready to accept it but objectivist is saying that no these principles are coming from the world which is above us we humans are not responsible the god has given some moral principles that transcends this physical world and we have to accept it without denying it we should not question okay that divine comment theory na uh, and then this eugenics is coming under which uh, eugenics eugenics is a belief i said na the realism uh, opposing uh, realism there are some people they believe that no no there are no such moral principles because each and every person is having their own that suppose like, for that only i gave eugenics like hitler let us take a prince, uh, people like hitler hitler is thinking that eugenics is right this theory is right but it is not right na there is a truth which is surpassing everything okay the in individual beliefs surpassing the individual beliefs that is called realism for that i gave you genesis example now we will go to the topic first topics so introduction part got over so i hope you students have understood about the introduction part so do you understand and you have any doubt in introduction anyone introduction means the everything huh? let us do a synopsis of it we will com- we have completed one topic so introduction part we have seen about the definition for ethics after seeing about definition for ethics we also saw law and ethics ha huh? law and ethics then in law and ethics we also learnt about two equations how we have to differentiate because there is always a interlinking between morality and law but morality is not equal to law that is uh, ethics is not equal to law and law is not equal to ethics we also categorized law into four category in that ethics has uh, been fo- ethics is following in the third category and law is fall- uh, falling fall- falling in the first category Uh, like changeable and unchangeable viable and inviolable so we studied completely what is law and ethics then after that we went to human values human values we studied what is values what is meant by human values then hv has to be thought for the later because i am going to connect this with the fifth chapter human values the particular that sentence na in your syllabus you can see human values lessons learned from lives of reformers administrators leaders that topic will be combinedly taken along with the fifth unit that is contributions of philosophers and moral thinkers from around the world and india there is one topic is there we will combine the, that two and study that time i will say what is human values we have learned values now no we have learned what is values they are individual principles then we also said there is a two important division for uh, values one is instrumental value and intrinsic value we also some stories through that we understood what is values and after studying values we also saw the differentiation between ethics and values so hereafter we should not confuse what the ethics with the values ethics are the standard principles values varies from person to person and time to time so after crossing that then we came to the next topic called as uh, ethics and religion ha huh? ethics and religion uh, in ethics and religion we also saw how the philosophers are arguing that uh, ethics is a part of religion and some say that philosophical ethics is a part of reasons and experience and it does not do anything with religion but we also concluded that even though now we are experiencing and identifying the facts uh, truth moral principles for initially we every one has derived our moral principles that role of society uh, the topic is connected here so role of society educational institution uh, okay role of society i am sorry mr santosh the cameraman is not here uh, so let me adjust the chair huh? at least for you that will be better i hope so i i hope so now you can see me so what happens hmm, where we left the role of society education institutions and schools in inculcating values all these are uh, has used a means uh, of religion religion as a means in order to teach ethics for us because we as a child will only obey to threat Uh, our command so uh, that that is how we started our life that ethics started in in us through religion only through fear only through god only the face of god and so we said that even though now we experience after we become matured we experience and we find the facts the one uh, the initiation of ethics inside us has happened through only religion so we finished with that and is any other topic we discussed any other topic apart from this then we have saw uh, see this moral moral values ha huh? what are the doctrines which is available in say ethics 
the terms which you have to use in your case studies everything ah huh? right now we can go to our first topic so this is a basic huh? with this only we have to start our ethics journey so now we are going to the first topic you can write the topic now we will discuss uh, the things under this topic and what we have to take as notes we will take as notes right essence determinants and consequences of ethics in human actions human actions this is a topic under this we are going to see something so if you see already we have seen something related to human action have you have we or not uh, that we missed now when, when we are summarizing we have missed that human actions we also saw about that so what are human action how it has to be done that also we saw that and uh, now apart from that i am going to categorize human action into three okay into three one good second bad third indifferent this again we can write as moral human action okay h e a means human action moral actions immoral action a moral you have to know the term you know you know the meaning i already told you we have to follow kiss strategy na instead of writing the action which are not moral you have to use a term called as immoral action okay like this indifferent actions a moral actions like that you have to use a term like that uh, sorry my diagram is very bad here uh, so because i am sitting and doing it that's why now we will go for good so with this we are going to derive some actions you know uh, some uh, analogies we can say that first right whenever you are performing an action it should be either a good action or a bad action or an indifferent action for example let me give an example for you i am throwing a stone right i am throwing a stone what type of action is this bad Uh, that's why we get confused na no? we throwing a stone just throw i'm just throwing a stone i'm not saying i'm throwing stone at someone ha uh, and i'm not thro- throwing stone at a dog or something ha uh? so i'm just throwing a stone it might be inside a water or it might be in somewhere there ha uh, or it might be in the middle of the road i might might have picked it up and thrown it some uh, thrown somewhere else ha uh? so it is a indifferent action indifferent it's a amoral it's not related to moral at all ha uh, it's it is not connecting at sorry it is not connecting us with morality ha uh, we are not going to evaluate those action based on moral terms they are called indifferent action suppose i am throwing that stone ha uh, at a dog what type of action is this immoral immoral it's a bad action na no? i am just throwing a dog is there and it didn't do anything i just want to harm him i i want to hurt him so i am throwing a stone at a dog so this is a immoral action it's a bad action you know it's a bad action again if you come here i am throwing a stone at a dog hmm which is about to harm a child what type of action is this good action because i don't want to hurt that is not my intention my intention is to save the child in order to save the child i want to throw a stone but accidentally the throw stone has hit the dog now this is a moral action okay this is a moral action so this is how you have to differentiate your action and if you take mr g subarao's book uh, and the textbook of uh, the this test test textbook which is prescribed here uh, in the market whenever wherever you go everybody will carry subarao if they want to study ethics but don't study the entire subarao uh, you will uh, hate ethics after that you will never touch ethics in your life um, that's the truth so what you have to do is that in that one portion is necessary that i'm going to discuss with you that any action see before that you have to note this whenever you are evalu- evaluating i already told what type of action you have to evaluate uh, yes na we already discussed an, that na an action done with knowledge dot 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 ah uh, what type of action we have to evaluate now i am going to say 
if you are evaluating action you have to take three things in mind one is the object of the action second is circumstances of the action third one is purpose that is aim purpose of the action aim ah these three things has to be kept in mind one is object of the action second one is circumstances of the action third one is purpose that is aim of the action for what purpose you have done it whenever you are doing an action you have to keep three thing in your mind one is the object that is the inner essence we can call this as inner essence the real meaning of the action ah huh? inner essence real meaning the, the real action the real action you can call that call like that the, what action you are performing that is called as a object ah huh? you can also write what action you are performing ah huh? what action you are doing actually that is called as object circumstances is the situation in which you are performing that action here what action you are performing ah huh? the situation in which you are performing that action okay performing the action and purpose what is the ambition aim aim of the action purpose of the action intention aim or intention of the action these three things you have to keep in mind right when you take that subara book you will never understand this so listen carefully here so these are the three things which you have to keep in mind when you are performing an action when you are going to evaluate an action based on moral principles you have to evaluate what the action really which which type of action which was performed and what is the circumstances in which that action has got performed and what is the purpose what is the real intention of the action even though they might have done this action what is the real intention for what purpose they have done that three things has to be kept in mind have you done this shall i ram shall i ram so with that in mind you have to consider four conditions right we are not going to uh, take down so take down this when i was telling you take uh, running notes huh? i am not going to dictate so what happens first one an a- an action okay an action which is good or bad which object is you can write which whose object is good or bad right like that an action whose object object means you know huh what type of action you are performing good or bad remains so remains so this is the first statement you have to remember means what is the meaning of this huh done <coughs> what is the meaning of this an object uh, sorry an action whose object is good or bad it will remain so example right for this i am giving an example for you telling lies this is action you are performing the object is you are telling lies is it a good or bad behavior bad na bad remember this this is bad it will remain bad only whatever situation you are doing it it is bad whatever condition whatever aim you are doing it it will remain bad only right second with this we are going for the second one an action which is good will become more or less good see this word more or less good depending on the situations and purpose okay depending on the situation and purpose this is the second statement which you have to remember so hmm. first case hmm. what is telling lies to save her ah that is why i am coming to the second one na ah. we'll slowly go ah crawl then uh, walk then run jump ah fly 
so now an action which is going uh, which is good will become more or less good depending on the situations and purpose for this let us i am rubbing this also i think you have done it see this you have to use when you are writing a case study you have to say this like this huh? this is the analogy which is derived so you know example you can say telling truth i uh, will take simple examples that will help you easily telling truth huh? telling truth telling truth is what type of action good the object is good right here the object is good now you are going to tell truth under two situation right one thing is ah uh, let us imagine a situation then we will write this okay a couple you are there you are standing in a junction where the four roads meet na that we call as a junction you are the one and only person who is standing there and now what happened a couple is running towards you okay the moment you saw them you understood that there is something problem because it, it looks like a intercast marriage he, he told that it is an intercast marriage and they are chasing in order to kill the boy and the girl now they are running for life they said we are going in this direction they will definitely come and ask you please don't tell that we went in this direction and they ran okay now you are there you are mahatma gandhi ha huh? you are following gandhi in principle now that uh, group is coming ha huh? with the the uh, you know that swords and all those tools they are coming approaching you and they were asking did you see somebody going in this direction any direction which direction they went ha huh? which direction they were like this ha huh? then you are saying Uh, you are a gandhi na you are mahatma gandhi in principle you are following that so you are saying yeah they went in the east direction what are, what will happen they will be killed they will be killed so what they are saying okay when you are saying a truth and le- it leads to lose a life ha huh? it lose a life you didn't kill that person but the way you spoke killed that killed that person so this is this is less good they are saying this is less good even though it is a good but it is le- they don't say it is bad understand that they don't say this action is bad they say it is good only because you are following your moral principle now you are telling a truth but it is less good okay but if you are saying uh, telling truth in order to save a life even though even though okay ha huh? you face hardships that suppose in suppose let us take like this you are in the work ha huh? you know that definitely if you are telling this truth your job will go right even then you are telling the truth okay in order to save somebody uh, mr abhijit has gave something expiring food to others bad if it is not hygiene but you still serves to others so what he has given this i doesn't know i think he has given some examples for us ha huh? so what he says is that to save a life even though you face hardships this is more good more good okay because you are saying the truth even though you are going to lose your job in the event of saying this truth you want to say the say the say truth because that is the truth which uh, which is there and it cannot be hidden so this is called more good and if you are saying the truth and it leads to the effect now which already we saw that uh, voluntary in cast event so you know that that the couples will be get killed then that is less good they are saying it is less good right do you understand do you understand everyone less good okay less good and more good right okay for less good he has given some examples for us i hope so huh? okay right because he is saying even though it is the food it is not freshly cooked and you are serving someone you are serving a food so you are uh, helping them to eradicate hunger but it, since it is not hygienic so it is less good he is giving an example like that good abhijit you are uh, trying to help us now we'll go for the third statement right second statement do you understand understand or not ah third one see before going to the third statement i am going to give you some tips uh, for increasing your memory uh, that is the must need of the hour you know uh, the you know the one who is a dire need that they have to clear in the next attempt uh, there is a simple trick which you can use now and then what are the jobs you are doing with the 
even if you you might be a left hand or you might be a right hand that doesn't matter whatever job you're doing with one hand you should try to practice with the other hand now and then that will increase your memory power okay suppose if you are writing with this hand it will be very hard to write with this the other hand but you have to practice now and then otherwise when you are combing a hair with this hand you should try to comb with this hand also so this is the work not only the writing they usually say you have to write but not only that all the other works what are the jobs you are doing going to do with you are using this hand much means this hand also to be put into use okay this is the one this side our memory has be, uh, will be stored so this is very important so we have to always exercise very rare few people will use this hand but they should also give exercise to the the other huh? the rest, uh, two hands has to be used right now and then that is why if you see see that one who do this job na the t t wala chai wala what you will do coordination is there na ah uh, both has to be coordinated in order to increase our memory power come to the third point an action which is bad or which which object is bad ah uh, right like that this will be better here we missed object is bad will become more or less bad okay depending dot 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 same depending on the situation and purpose depending on the situation and purpose ha huh? same same we need not write again ha huh? depending on the situation and purpose dot 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 for example first one we said na telling lies ha ah. telling lies ha ah, what do you want to say as you are about to say something uh, i forgot your names sorry what's your name please uh, runj runj runjun runjun ha ah? ha ah, right okay i uh, tell me Telling lies to hmm. say save a life. Hmm. Hmm. To save a life. Example: In a bus, there is ah. a terrorist. Ah, okay. Who comes in mm -hmm. and asks that what is your religion? Uh -huh. What is the person's religion sitting beside you? Ah, okay. And Then you know that there, this is the religion. Ah. Yet you save a life or conform to a life mm -hmm. just to save this. Uh, uh, save the passengers, huh? Yeah, yeah it's right. It's it's okay, but. Um, But that is telling life. Ah, I want to save a life. Ah, to save a life. He is asking whether he is this or that. Then you are saying no. Ah, but you know, you uh, one thing I have to say is that you should not use this example because there is a lot of misunderstanding which is going on. If there is a terrorist, if we are speaking about terrorist, then we are commonly taking to about one religion. We are about to speak about one religion, and this has to. We should not encourage. As since we are having a brotherly relationship here, we are living in a very. you know the harmonious manner with our uh, fellowships so this uh, you should not speak this again this i am telling for your own interest so but what's in it communal riots situation yeah in communal riots that it is happening i want to save them mm, uh, so yeah you want to save them but you doesn't know who, who they are and all no, i know that mm, okay then you want to tell a lie yeah. uh, okay then we will take like that uh, it's it's okay now we will consider this example but in future don't uh, use this type of examples even in exams i am coming to say ha huh? Uh, so save a life okay for saving a life you are going to tell a lie right this is they are saying less bad okay because anyhow telling lies object is bad objective of this is bad okay so it will remain so but if you are say telling a lie to save a life then it becomes less bad and if you are telling a lie to implicate someone ah huh? falsely implicate someone in court they will do na uh, false accusations then it is more bad they are saying you are telling lie in order to harm somebody then it is more bad you are telling lie in order to save a life then it is less bad okay do you understand all the three statements understood understood uh, whatever book i am challenging you today go and take they will give the same thing but you will never come to understand about it right because it will be given in that manner even the one who written the book doesn't know what it means Huh? We will call a book a book if it is having no plagiarism. But here, a book is called book if it is copied from various sources, right? Because we need it for the for our for our concept clarity, right? Four. 
an action which is indifferent which is indifferent will become good or bad based on the situations or purpose or purpose okay circumstances situation means circumstances or purpose for this we'll take two example one is example throwing stone already we saw throwing stone is a indifferent action right ah uh, if you are throwing the stone in order to hurt someone hurt someone then this is bad if you are throwing a stone in order to save someone okay then this is good right ha ah. second example we can take this is related to the purpose purpose we are saying then come to the situation second example i am rubbing this okay second example if you take <coughs> sex in wedlock and this is our books are dis- discussing your book is having this example don't worry i am not i have not framed it newly this is in a subaru also sex in wedlock this is a indifferent action but situation decides where this is indifferent na ah uh, how a situation will decide <laughs> see we can take like this if that if that person if the husband is having a uh, wedding wedding wedlock so if he is having a intimate relationship with his wife okay after marriage if he is having a intimate relationship with his wife okay this is good act only huh that is why we are going into wedlock right ha uh, so this is a good act but if he is having a illegal relationship okay illegal relationship then this is a bad act they says situation 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 ha huh? purpose we already saw this is a situation where uh, accidentally accidentally a person due to some situations he is going into a sex with some other person then this is definitely a bad act and if it is with his wife extra marital ha extra marital a relationship right right done done why are we taking extra marital uh, relationship or that wedlock only that is to separate from wedlock yeah he, he wedlock yeah, it's separate but he is married person na married hmm. after he, after marriage let us take like this if you are confused we can say sex after marriage okay with this partner is good but with some other who is illegal then it is bad right take like that ha huh? that is that will be better did over done understood understood uh, and can we like again categorize with his wife into two with his wife into two yeah ha uh, why consent without consent <laughs> <laughs> without consent so she she is talking about no means no ah huh? yeah no means no and now recently supreme court has also given a judgment ah huh? go and see yeah. that also ah uh, what they gave <laughs> what they gave <laughs> huh? a uh, man also has the same uh, <laughs> you know because what happened the girls they uh, live living together is now a, you know it's a fashion uh, it, it it happened long before but now it is uh, in the peak so what happens the uh, girl and a boy accepts everything and live together okay now the girl also accepts and go with the boy and boy also accepts and live with the girl but what they did is that recently the judgment was given by the court 2 uh, years before a lady who has lived 10 uh, years with a man claimed that she is the wife of the man now the man does not want her and she want the property of the man equally shared to her okay 50% the property has to be divided to her the court also delivered the judgment now the court said that in the recent judgment it gave that see you are also accepting that without marriage i am ready to live with this man and you are going with that man once one you married only according to hindu tradition you can share the property without marrying how will you ask for the property to the man then you have to enter into wedlock then go and live with him 
it's your fault also na so court will not always come for a rescue so they said that be careful so whenever you are going into relationship with a man and there was also case in a, one of your ips officer your senior now again he joined into the service what he did is when he was studying he was living with a girl living together was there in delhi what happened that girl also helped this boy because he has clear, clear the main so she thought then he has definitely to clear the interview and she prepared for him every optional subject for the mains she prepared notes and she gave and this person also cleared the exam and he scored the top third rank but he opted for ips third scorer huh? third rank holder of that year but what happened after getting into the service he said no my mother and father are not accepting to marry you so i want to marry a girl who is an ias officer and he also married the girl who is an ias officer and uh, after that the one the girl na who has helped him has uh, filed a complaint over him, fir fir is filed on him and he was suspended from the service right so what basis because this person has uh, uh, lived with that girl na now the, he has cheated this girl the girl gave a complaint that this person cheated me he lewd me he lewd me that he will marry me and i i also gave everything like my money my uh, so there's just a different perspective of seeing the breakup like it happens with everybody no is she saying it's, it's it's not a breakup na she said it's not a breakup she said this person has cheated me has left me ah uh, yeah you can file an fir you can say that this person has cheated me huh uh, so that is why i am saying na women are in the higher uh, you know you don't know your rights what are the rights you do have ah uh, if you go crying into the police station then the men will be beaten to death as other case so whatever that is why some are misusing it you know some are misusing it that is a different case so what happened this girl told that this person has cheated me and he left to the hometown after he got into the service he married a girl without my knowledge okay without my knowledge breakup is that mutually you are accepting you are you don't want huh? i don't want i don't and even though if you, if if you are not accepting the breakup you can go and complain that this person has used me okay she said that this But person is told to say that hmm what told <laughs> generally women women are doing this thing that they are living relationship hmm. after some time they are like ah uh, but everybody is not accepting it na no? some women can't accept it because this girl expected that this person will marry her because he promised her and then she also showed some proof that these are the proofs have it now his service was suspended after that and then they gave, gave went for a settlement with the girl they went for a settlement and they settled some i don't know how much money was uh, transferred to her after that because she, her father is also an ias officer that's the other case ha huh? the settlement happened properly now she is studying upsc only i hope so and, and i i think she left the field uh, last before year also she was in delhi only she was preparing for her exams now she left to some abroad or something so this this is that and, and then this person after settlement he joined in the service so think about it be careful ha huh? when you are here in delhi <laughs> you have to be careful in each and every inch ha huh? you don't know where the tiger is Mm-hmm. which has said that in case of uh, rape mm. when the girl uh, withdraws the complaint mm. because of a settlement of marriage mm. and they get married mm. even then the case would not stop there mm-hmm. because it's a, uh, previously they what they will do they will marry the girl to the boy one who has done that and then that will be settled ah huh? yes, uh, kaap panchayat will do that uh, <laughs> but <it's still> <laughs> Uh, it's still there there in practice they will do it ah huh? but that is why men also will see na okay this girl i want i will go <laughs> and i will do something and then they will marry me marry her to me no objections and this happened but now what they give the case the case still the case has to go on ah uh, it should not be dissolved the case has to go on okay good huh? no no thanks ma'am do you think there are some ethical issues in this respect also because the interest of the girl and the mm. boy and the marriage mm, mm, mm. which is recently mm. taking place uh, that is why you know the co- society interest ah uh, uh, yeah right. that is why i am coming to say no. not every girl is interested in it the girl is a, she even though she has touched the age of 18 she may have big, bigger dreams in her life na she is also a human being she has her own dreams she might have been dreamt of becoming an ias officer becoming an astronaut anything but now this person has spoiled everything of her na for the society she is bearing something she is not accepting she is bearing tolerating okay so that is why the court has said unless until okay the girl i i think there might be something like the girl has to uh, voluntarily do it 
with her own will that she has to withdraw the case then it will be done if the if the complainant is withdrawing then how they will proceed the case mm. Case is not going to stop. Uh, and then case what they will do? To be brought to logic uh-huh. Because otherwise it will go a wrong message to the society. Uh, to the society. Okay. Then how the girl will suffer, na? Her life will suffer. And then you have to. Uh, so you have to ask a polity teacher. Huh? <laughs> this is a law case. You have to ask what should be done at the end. But ethically, if a girl is accepting it, and then again the court is going to punish her. At least, I think they will not punish. They will warn. Huh? And they will give a warning because this is the life of a girl, na. If a girl is, if a girl says, "I am okay, I am withdrawing from my case because he is now my husband. I want to live peacefully with him." Then the no, they will just give deliver a judgment that this should not be repeated. They give a message. Message in most cases, the court will give a message and dissolve the case. Okay, because they have to give some, uh, you know, message to the country that this should not repeat. And a message to the girl also. If but you are I not wishing. What kind of justice is that you are marrying your existence? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it is. It, it was taking place very long ago, very long time, na. Even the, because you know she will be outcasted. Yeah. We are living in a different society. Okay, that girl will be living in a different society. When you put yourself in her shoes, empathy. You have to feel in the empathetic manner. Uh, it is see she also will think in very various way that why I should accept him. He is a drunkard. Uh, he is totally out of mind. He doesn't know to live in his own. He will never go for work. Everything that person will be like that. But even though she don't want to accept him, the society will outcast her. If she is ready to face everything, she can fight against that. Okay, I don't want to marry him and come out. You can see this is only in films, but in real life it is not possible at all. Practicality is not existing there. Even in way, uh, the most developed areas of the country also having the same. They say the girl, the girl now nah, you have to accept it. Society will talk wrong about you. You will be outcasted. Still, it is existing. That is why I tell behavior change strategy is necessary for our people. Huh? That is a scheme called as what is the scheme name for the adolescent boy? The scheme proposed for an adolescent boy, particularly to change the behavior of a boy towards a girl. What is the scheme name? Hmm? Swalamban, I hope so. Swalamban. Swalamban or something. Swalamban is for girls or uh, boys. Boys, some scheme. I forget, I will tell you later. Swalamban scheme is for girls, I hope so. Let us uh, verify and tell you. Huh? So it's particularly for changing the behavior of adolescent boy towards the women. How they think towards the women. Because in most of the societies, it's a patriarchal society. Very few are matriarchal. Which society is matriarchal society? In India. Ah, Kasi tribes. Particularly, they are matriarchal. Apart from that, in Kerala. Hmm, Kerala particular Nair community, we can say. They are uh, matriarchal. So women will lead this uh, family. Women will lead the society. What the women is saying, they have to obey. Okay, this is the way they are uh, placed. So very few societies are like that. In others, rest patriarchal only. So we have to change the behavior. At least it should not be a patriarchal or matriarchal. It should be an equilateral society that both women and men has to speak their minds out. That it has to be like that. So now we are going into our topic. In that essence will be given us notes. Essence means the importance of ethics in human action. And then consequences will be discussed later. Now we will go for the determinants. Okay. Determinants. Of ethics in human action. For this uh, we will be discussing. Determinants means from one side of angle you have to see the interruptions which you face. When you are acting ethically. What are the interruptions which is coming and disturbing you when you are going to act ethically. That we call as determinants. For this we can draw a triangle in that first one. Determinants to human actions. Okay, determinants to human actions. That is what we are going to see. In that first, legal interpretations. Okay, for this we can give example as, uh, have you heard about this? Hammurabi code. Uh, what is this? It's the first code ever given. Uh, India? No, no, it's 
it's very nice to hear it is given in india huh? in india it's manuskriti hmm. modern manu huh? we call ambedkar as modern manu who gave derived our constitution uh, now hammurabi code come to this hammurabi code this is is there still there ha huh? jewel it is more bad <laughs> hmm. thank you mr abhijit Uh, so you are giving some examples for us so if you see this hammurabi code huh? this was an ancient uh, it's a babylonian code we can call as a babylonian code is it derived in ancient mesopotamia history started or not yes sir i hope so the spelling is right huh uh, history started now what is mesopotamia you will learn old names and new names in your world history you have to So what is Mesopotamia? Ancient history also we will do. There is a question in every mains in our days. For the past five years, they are comparing with the Greek, ah, uh, ancient Indian civilization with Greek Mesopotamian civilization. That will be com- comparison every time. Uh, most probably, it is expected question. So don't uh, take it easily. So what is ancient Mesopotamia? Iraq, Persia. Ah, uh, Iraq. Particularly vast area of Iraq now, which is located then uh, then Kuwait. a little area of kuwait you know the Tig- tigris euphrates river na i can consider that that civilization euphrates previously the civilization were located near, near the river bank so the tigris euphrates river river bank this uh, civilization was located that is called as mesopotamia and now in modern time we call it as iraq and uh, kuwait is also a, a few part of kuwait uh, all those areas coveredly it is called as mesopotamia in the ancient time and there they formed a hammurabi code it's a babylonian code it has 282 laws in it ha huh? to you remember 282 laws were the, uh, there ha huh? <laughs> related to marriage property yes yes mr abhijit it was related to that and what they did in the in that the first law states that i for a knife tooth for a tooth okay this was a hammurabi code i for a knife somebody is beating uh, jesus christ said that if somebody is slapping in your left cheek show them their right cheek ha huh? but hammurabi code said that if somebody is beating you trying to slap you in one cheek slap them in the two cheeks ha huh? otherwise somebody taking one eye then you have to take one eye for them and nowadays they are converting it totally differently if you are take if they are taking one eye then you have to remove two eyes from their body ha huh? so this <laughs> this is called as hammurabi code and um, when people are reading these types of codes and this is this varies this also varies uh, related to slaves you know slaves men there is differentiation for men different codes are there for women there are different codes because women are considered very lowly in lowly status and slaves also there are different codes based on that this hammurabi code was uh, formed and uh, see whenever you are reading the hammurabi code then what do you will think in your mind you will get a confusion na because uh, buddha is saying that you should not do any harm uh, no while non violence gandhi ji is saying non violence but hammurabi code is saying that violence for violence tooth for a tooth i for an i that is not wrong at all so the person will what he will do definitely this will interrupt the ethical uh, ethical way of acting right ethical way of acting is going to be affected through these types of things which is still existing and then second one is moral development second one we can call as moral development moral development and family influences moral development and family influences so what is this moral development and family influences huh? the i already told yesterday there is also separate topic for you role of society education institution in inculcating values so moral development is nothing but developing your value systems so when this moral development will happen uh, there is a separate topic we will be studying that a philosopher called sorry a psychologist name uh, you know morris massey she is more uh, her name is morris massey uh, she used to say that hmm, a child is like a clay okay it is the duty of the society the education institution and the father the parents to shape him into a part which is useful for the society in shaping there are three periods that you will be learning separately uh, when you are going to the next chapter you will be studying about her there are three periods that is from period uh, like age 0 to 7 like that she is categorizing and that adolescent age and then the mature age 
the so in each and every age the child try to copy somebody who he com- consider himself as role model in one age he consider his father and mother as a role model and when he starts going to school he consider some teachers as a role model the one who is teaching him he takes them as a role model i want to become like my teacher even now many of you sitting here will have a role model which has created an impression impression in your mind in the smaller younger age you might have face some teacher who you might have loved hmm? still now you know there, there are some boys who have written love letters to the teachers huh? teacher i love you huh? they doesn't know what is the meaning of love but they want to express their uh, uh, feelings that uh, na the liking towards the teacher so this is how uh, they are taking a role model uh, like a teacher to themselves and then watching the movie then that that is a period where they observe the stars na huh? film stars huh? then they want to become like one and if you have a brother then definitely he will act like one in your home he will act like the shahrukh khan or salman khan and he thinks himself as the one and he behaves the same way so uh, we are developing value systems through all these things huh? then uh, the social in moral development apart from that observation first one i am saying is observation observation you are observing everyone and then you are acting same way a second one is social and cultural norms what is this social and cultural norms huh these are the norms which are given by the particular culture the society see for example in tamil nadu if you take i don't know about here uh, because i uh, we doesn't know the proper system culture of the north indians because i doesn't know hindi how will i learn the culture that is the second one huh? uh, so what happens in our south india what we will do is that if a person is coming to our home huh what they will do is that they will greet the other person by putting two hands together even now they do it after that only the hugging everything the, now the westernization has come into india na? so we will do it but what they do is that the head of the family na head of the family they will be greeting like this or shaking hand anything but the head the women one who is coming there na? the wife of the person one who comes they always has to greet like this one lee to the lady of the house they never should touch their hair lady's hand or never try to hug a lady's hand so what you happen if a foreigner is coming to tamil nadu na like if he is coming and visiting a some house what happens if the if a male is standing there he used to hug him if a female is also standing there he used to hug then what happens now the husband will take her and say beat left right huh? how dare because our culture does not allow it because he will ask how dare you stand there you know that he will come and hug you na huh? where are you standing there you are expecting that huh? all these things will be they are pressurizing the women huh? the women will uh, be pressured by all these words because you know women are like god in south india uh, they respect women in enormous manner same way they also uh, pay attention to the women's word uh, same manner uh, long back now only they are sharing the property same in tamil nadu very long back they have equal rights to property women have equal rights to property they have equal rights to the saying so when a when a male person who is not belonging to that family sees a woman she he has to greet a woman only with folding hands not touching her okay it's a sin so these are the culture norms which they are which have been taught to us very long back so whenever whenever we are wherever we are going we have to follow this because it is there present in our mind which is coming through our society same way in north india i have observed one good habit that whenever an elder is coming you have to touch the feet of the elder but in south india because of the self respect movement of ee periyar uh, you know it is not there so if if a old man is coming we don't want to touch we need not bend and touch their legs huh? only at two times we will be doing one during our marriage the other thing is one during the puberty period the maturity period when they keep some functions then they go and bend and touch the leg of the elders otherwise you should not touch the and particularly in tamil nadu ladies should not touch the legs of anyone that is why i said na they are respected in enormous manner ladies should not touch the leg of any person except their uh, matrilineal except the parents and the matrilineal uncle uncle yeah the mother's brother na mother's brother is equal to mother for a girl okay if a mother is not there then the mother's brother will take care of that girl as a mother that is why okay umbilical cord connection is there so we have to touch only two people's leg one is the mother that is parents leg and the other is matrilineal uncle's leg apart from that a girl girl should not touch anyone's leg if she is touching the wealth of the other person will go to the girl they consider like that because girl is considered as goddess lakshmi in our state so that is why whenever a money is to be dealt they will call the lady of that family and give the money in the hand of the lady of the family because and anything which is going to be started should be begin with the lady 
okay these are the culture which has been taught to us and each and every uh, place is having their own culture and this, this is the norms that is why when somebody is coming to your house then the father and mother will say why are you going inside like that your uncle has come come here greet him say hello huh? even though you don't like him because he don't bring sweets and chocolates for you but you have to greet him hello uncle come here how are you uh, how are you beta i am fine even though you are not fine inside huh? you are burning but you say yeah i am fine okay please feel at home you have to say all these things na these are the things which i teach you so this is a moral development which your family gives you and this also plays a part in the ethical behavior and the family influences is separately coming because you may ask this is also part of this family influences another part you are going to discuss is that after getting married huh what happens even though the boy does not like to be a corrupted officer corrupt corrupted official like ias ips officer the women one who marries na one incident also happened what happened uh, you know that uh, there was a ias officer who was very genuine he never involved in any corruption he is very good he is very straight forward he was a upright very good upright person and uh, what happened he married a women uh when you become an ias ips officer you don't decide your marriage your caste and your community will decide your marriage community marriage will happen do you know that or not when you become an ias officer or ips officer you need not select your bride or groom uh, the biggest person in the community will approach your house then the community will say yes you have to take the lady of that house so that our fame and name will grow so he may be a politician and so same way this ias officer married um, custom also what custom for what are you saying is custom yeah this customs ah uh, customs the traditions we can say so what happens hmm, this man married a lady hmm, of a politician hmm, daughter of a politician so you know he is a very influential person there and this lady used to take her chappal and beat the subordinates who are working under the as officer na except because since he is a husband he never beat her with the chappal otherwise he would do that also she is that much uh, arrogant lady and everybody knows about her and what happens when this as officer is just such, just such an upright person in his life and when he goes into his family uh, every time you can hear his sound shouting outside leave me leave me and uh, he will beat him chasing around the house Uh, he she is such an arrogant lady and what happened this person committed suicide at least at last because she used to say that you don't know how to live you are an ias officer if you are putting on sign you can turn over 400 500 crores of rupees but you are unfit okay see how much hard effort hard work he has put in coming into that field upsc field after coming into that field because of the life partner he has committed suicide that everybody has known and this is a very worst case he has he hanged in front of the house only huh? there is a tree in front of his house he, su- he committed suicide by hanging in the tree and uh, it's very worst case i have ever read so this is the way the family pressures are there in order even if you become an ias ips officer your family will question you why only you ha huh? you have to be upright there are also lot of ias officer having two three bungalows ha huh? why you are having one small hut and living here ha huh? these types of questions will come to you due to family pressure also your way of acting ethically will get affected then third one religions religion okay third one let me see it's religion only so still now you have understood the huh? is there any doubt should we repeat anything again hmm okay religious beliefs same right only religious beliefs and experiences religious beliefs and experiences not only happening only for the male ias and ips officer a female is also facing the same thing uh, when you come uh, to harassment and you know that when a woman is showing a hand to you with the black dot in the center then you have to understand what is the meaning of that what is the meaning of that mm. suppose if you are encountering some women mm. yeah. he is asking somebody he's asking us he's asking me it's good right so if you're putting uh, the black 
uh, dot representation in your hand and showing like this uh, women if she shows then that means it is a domestic violence is happening a domestic harassment is happening to her and she is harassed by her own husband okay own husband own uh, mother in law own father in law is harassing her in the home and she is not able to speak it out then she can put a black dot in her hand and show like this <laughs> yeah. So you have you should be very careful now, huh? Now you are grown up. If you are a child, they will not take it as a serious one. But now if you are a grown up, so now uh, religious belief and experiences, huh? Then see. That's why I told uh, religion is also a major grounding in order for you to make you to behave ethically. For that, I, uh, we also saw, saw about Garuda Purana, na? Uh, what is that book? Uh, Garuda, Pur- Garuda Purana or Garuda Purana we call in Tamil uh, Tamil Nadu so Garuda Purana and Garuda Purana what is that? it's a book in after that death. Mm, after death there are some 28 uh, punishments which they have listed out huh? yeah. and they will uh, a film was also yesterday also we were discussing a film was also yeah. short uh, yeah. short uh, uh, so they what they will do is that they will allow the buffaloes to run over you huh? if you are doing adultery and if you are uh, taking interest in other man's wife then this punishment is there that punishment is there like that uh, so Garata Purana is suggesting someone then whenever you are reading this then what you will do you may not believe it even though you may not believe it you may have some doubt now it might be true what will happen it might be true then at least for this sake you will try to become ethic, be an ethical person so these are another one thing you can say it religious beliefs and experiences which you face then that's it so these are the three factors which are acting as determinants to act as a uh, complete ethical person right so these are the things which is helping you regulating your behavior all those things and i hope you missed one point in under law and ethics yesterday write that point also huh? similarities between law and ethics you missed that you take that point Then you, uh, we will take the notes, then we will finish today. Huh? So that's all today. So it, uh, determinants and consequences also. Nah? We will discuss the consequences, then we will go further. Remember, I have to give that point. So consequences. So this is determinants. Done? Determinants? Over? Huh, 28 punishments are there. <laughs> At least it will be interesting. Nah? You can read it. Uh, Vikram's movie. Aparishita. Uh, in Tamil, uh, Tamil, it is called Anniyan. Uh, Anniyan. The movie name is Anniyan in Tamil. And they have translated, dubbed it, uh, Aparishit. Okay. So he comes with long hair and all. Uh. Uh, it's very weird. Even seeing him is a punishment. Uh. <laughs> Why we need punishment after that? Now, come here. Uh, where were we? Consequences. Uh, consequences of ethics. Uh, consequences of ethics in human action. So, this, what we wish to share is that, you may say that, the act performed by the doer, huh? if a doer is doing an act, then definitely he is the one who is going to face the consequences, that everybody know it. If I am doing a wrong, if I am telling a lie, then I have to face that, right? I, the consequences of that will be in my head, even though it does not affect me directly, then it circulates and comes to me back. Huh? Even though if you don't believe in Garuda Purana and the 28 punishments, then at least they say, what you do now, will, will you will serve here only, in this life, nowadays, they are saying, huh? because it's Kali Yu. Hmm? Karma, it will huh? ah, come back to us, huh? circulation, huh? like circulation comes back. But consider a case, uh, when I was there, um, uh, in the previous, now I have shifted the house, previous in previous house, there was a lady who was living, huh? she, she, she is a good, she is good, she is better. But you know, she is a married woman. Hmm? So, uh, the other one, the opposite, the next house lady, na, the one who is residing next to her, she also was of the same age of her. And they both got married. But I don't know why this lady doesn't like this, uh, the girl, the next door, the woman next door. And uh, the lady, the opposite to me, she used to talk to me nicely. Eh? She's a good woman. Uh, character wise, she's very nice and very good and kind person, innocent one. But I don't know why she like the, don't like this girl at all. Uh, whenever she talks to me, she used to say, I don't like this lady, you know. She is, uh, the way she walks, the way she talks, huh? I, I hate her. I mean, this woman's not jealousy also will be there a little bit. Uh, so what happened, she was telling to me like that. And uh, if, then one day what she did is that, hmm, uh, she was, she used to tell me that, 
whenever she is put, uh, hanging her dresses na for drying i i think that i should drag that uh, dress down and so that it will fell down na it will become dirty again she will go and wash she feels like that she is in that much anger in uh, on her and one day what she did is that she call, she went and befriended her mother in law ha huh? you know when you befriend a mother in law for the other lady which you want to punish what happens she will add flame to the fire huh? uh, you know fuel to the flames huh? she was adding something like you know your daughter is always speaking your daughter in law is always over in the phone or some uh, talking to somebody she is coming to the balcony she is always on the phone something something she was putting over to the mother in law and now you think what is the now what is the huh? fate, of the uh, fate of the lady who is in that house if the mother in law is treating her like a own daughter and now you are adding something to the mother in law then what happens to her so they say even though this girl has not done something directly uh, you, you need not go and hurt that lady you need not go and scold that lady but you have done something indirectly so even though you are not doing it directly you are also there you the reason indirectly doing some action then again they say the consequences of those actions the thing because this is only a tool you have you have used the mother in law is a tool you have used in order to make her suffer so again the consequences will be in your head only so these are the consequences of ethics in human action whatever things you do directly or indirectly uh, the karma you have to reap this is what they say so what is that wives transfer karma wives transfer so we will take the notes then we will uh, suspend for today and we will again meet tomorrow so we will go for the notes first topic essence determinants and consequences of ethics and human action for that you are going to take the notes in that i already told determinants you have to note on your own uh, we will dictate the essence essence of human actions uh, ethics in human action that i am going to give uh, before that have you done that ethical moral skepticism have you taken the notes not na you have not taken the notes for that right ethical or moral skepticism ethical subjectivism on one one line only right you can also draw a tabular column the words this side and the definition that side any anyway you can write so first one ethi- moral skepticism or ethical skepticism skepticism now we are dictating the notes so skepticism so now we we'll take the definition the view that the view that moral or ethical skepticism under that the view that the view that there are no valid moral principles the view that the view that there are no there are no there are no valid moral principles valid moral principles uh, definitely we will try to give the pdf no valid moral principles at all at all at all comma or that or or that or that or that we cannot know or that we cannot know whether there are any we cannot know whether there are any full stop then ethical subjectivism ethical subjectivism ethical subjectivism okay b a s m subjectivism under that morality is not dependent on society morality is not morality is not dependent on society morality is not dependent on society but only on the individual but only on the individual that is ethical subjectivism okay. individual then ethical relativism third one relativism ethical relativism <coughs> according to it huh this theory states that this theory states that i know i think you know that remember the examples you can also write the examples in the future when you are studying revising it so this theory states that there are no this theory states that there are no what i have to repeat about the subjectivism na subjectivism yeah ethical subjectivism i am repeating ethical subjectivism under that 
ethical subjectivism under that morality is not morality is not dependent on society morality is not dependent on society morality is not dependent on society but only on the individual but only on the individual this is under ethical subjectivism now come for ethical relativism relativism under that the third one ethical relativism this theory states that this theory states that this theory states that there are no states that there are no there are no universally valid moral principles this theory states that there are no universally valid moral principles there are no universally valid moral principles moral principles moral principles binding on all peoples moral principles binding on all peoples binding on all peoples at all times binding on all peoples at all times comma at all times comma but rather but rather but rather all times but rather all are valid but rather all are valid relative to culture but rather all are valid relative to culture that is ethical relativism okay ethical objectivism ethical objectivism for that it it says that says that the moral truth the moral truth the moral truth exist exist independently independently from opinion exist independently from opinion independently from opinion okay then write about moral absolutism in that absolute is subjectivist first first one i will repeat once we complete ha huh? so first we have done moral objectivism it is a, it says that the moral truth exists independently from opinion it says that moral truth exists independently from opinion then you have to write about absolutist subjectivist object absolutist subjectivist under that it believes that the moral law it believes that the moral law the moral law believes that the moral law does not moral law does not moral law does not come from does not come from some objective fact come from some objective fact about the world objective fact about the world fact about the world but instead but instead about the world but instead comes from within instead comes from within about the world but instead comes from within so inside the bracket you can write we are self legislating and inside the quotation you have to write we are inside the bracket you are going to write we are we are self legislating self hyphen l e like this self hyphen l e g i s l a t i n legislating ha huh? we are self legislating Co- close the quotation these things you have to remember we are self legislating according to who kant immanuel kant has said this ha huh? kant k a n t short form you write kant immanuel kant remember his name we are self legislation legislating okay right so full stop and continue so morality is subjective morality is subjective means the source of morality is subjective ha huh? so morality is subjective morality is subjective subjective but still remains universal okay understood but still remains universal now absolutist objectivist absolutist objectivist okay absolutist objectivist what is that under that there exist and that there exist and 
there exist an under absolutist objectivist there exist an there exist an eternal eternal and unchanging moral law there exist an eternal and unchanging is exist an eternal okay sorry so will be slow uh, so there exist so under absolutist objectivist okay under that we have to write there exist an there exist an eternal and there exist an eternal and unchanging eternal and unchanging eternal and unchanging unchanging moral law unchanging moral law okay eternal and unchanging moral law that that there exist an eternal and unchanging moral law that 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 transcends transcends that transcends d s okay transcends d s transcends the physical world okay there exist an eternal and unchanging moral law that transcends the physical world the transcends the physical world transcends the physical world transcends the physical world and the same for all people and the same for all people transcends the physical world and the same for all people same for all people people same for all people at all times same for all people at all times and places same for all people at all times and places okay. at all times and places so this is my whatsapp number if you have any doubt and you want to ask me personally you can message me in this i do have whatsapp and suppose if you want to write something na the most important thing i will dictate here because you have to write ha uh, again you have to read you have to also to listen so that you will never forget in your life that is why i am making you to mr uday you will get a pdf for what it is necessary i will be giving a pdf but what it is necessary and most important i will be dictating in the class because you have to listen one time then okay okay then second time you have to write it with your own hands then it will get into your brain that is why i am doing it here so uh, is very necessary that is why i am dictating uh, so uh, the other thing i will be forwarding through whatsapp for you if you have a group then i will definitely forward the other things huh? which uh, which is not uh, too much necessary but you have to take it down those notes will be forwarded for you now the first one you asked me to repeat so i am repeating it again write it skepticism about skepticism right so moral skepticism so i am again repeating is an moral skepticism under that the view that the view okay v a e w view that view that there are no the view that there are no there are no valid moral principles the view that there are no the view that there are no valid moral principles there are no valid moral principles at all that there are no valid moral principles at all comma principles at all comma okay valid moral principles at all comma or that o r r that we cannot or that we cannot know or that we cannot know that we cannot know whether that we cannot know whether there are any whether there are any okay whether there are any right whether there are any so i hope you have noted huh hmm. then if you want the mail id you can take will see in this we have missed one thing i will just uh, i will just discuss you just note in your mind uh, this will conclude this class and i hope so the importance i can forward in the whatsapp if you have a group or if anybody uh, can forward it in the group you can do it all right ha huh?
don't have group. Uh, every universe, uh, sorry, every institution is having a group. Now, what's a group? They do definitely do have. Ask your uh, administrator, huh? Who's there? Who's administering? Who's managing? You have to ask him. Okay, tell. Okay. No WhatsApp group. Ah, you can make it. Huh? You can make it. You can ask the seek the help of the administrator. You can make it so that those who are in the online can also get connected to you. Uh, so you, it's better to be a group, huh? Then see in this one thing we have missed it, that is egoism. Egoism, but this is not important because it's not existing now. Okay, now we are not use we are not using this concept in our theory is because egoism, there are three types of egoism. One is psychological egoism. Another one is ethical egoism. So I am not dictating the notes, just listen. Huh? Egoism, because somebody, if because all the books are discussing this and if you don't know what it is, then it is not good. So I am just saying, huh? ethical egoism. Another one is rational egoism. Egoism is divided into three. Right. So what is egoism? Hmm. What is ego? <coughs> From the word you have to uh, <coughs> you have to understand something. In the exams they say this, huh? when you are writing a mains even though you don't know anything, you have to split the question then understand and give something in there. At least one mark if you are gaining you are you are ahead of the ahead of your competitor. Right? So, egoism is nothing but you are thinking for your own self-interest. Psychological e egoism is saying that uh, uh, that it is natural tendency for humans to think in the interest of their own. Right? Even though if you know, uh, then they are asking what about the altruistic people? Altruistic people. And sociology will also be studying about the, the suicides, suicides, different type of suicides. suicides. Uh, Mr. G, what is your name? Rishabh, Rishabh, uh, Mr. Rishabh is from sociology background, I hope so you know uh, anything about that suicide, you will be studying at different types of suicide, I hope so. If you are not started to study, then you will be facing in the future that there are some four types of suicide, in that altruistic su suicide is also one form, uh, altruistic suicide. Who is doing that altruistic suicide? Suicide means what? Killing oneself, killing oneself. Huh? altruistic suicide is nothing but a sacrifice they are doing in order to save other people our army men, our military official is doing altruistic suicide in the interest of the mother nation that is altruistic suicide example so what they say is that then these type of people are not having ego they are saying these type of people are not having ego na. what you say is wrong then the psychological egoism saying that no it is definitely right because if you say see altruistic Altruism is also a type of egoism. For example, let me tell a story. A person was crossing a bridge. Hmm? A person was crossing a bridge. He is very good, kind and innocent person. But, you know, uh, he when, we was, when he was crossing a bridge, he saw that a piglet, you know piglet? What is piglet? A small, uh, pig. small pig, a small pig. So, the small pig has fell into the water and now he, he is shouting to for life. Huh? Uh, please, when, when an animal has fallen down, it will be screaming, you know, screaming that somebody will help me, I will come out. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, then, ego, he is saying ego is attitude. Huh? Ego is attitude problem. We say, no, attitude problem. Yes, attitude problem. Ego is uh, one type of attitude, he is saying. Yeah, right. So, now we will go for this. So what happens now the piglet is screaming for life and the man when he saws that and he dislike piglet, huh? pig, he don't like pig at all. Uh, some people don't like no, some animals so he don't like pig but he feels, uh, he saw the piglet and he crossed the bridge. Then uh, the moment he crossed the bridge he came back after some time, after traveling some distance he came back again and he saved the piglet from the water, he made, uh, made him come out of the water and he left for home. Then his friend was seeing these things because he was walking along with friend, along his friend, uh, along with his friend. Then his friend asked him, "Why you did this? You don't like pigs at all. How you touch the piglet and all? Uh, this is uh, I am very astonished." He was saying like that. Then he said, mm, uh, "This is how it shows that you are kind and innocent person." Then he says, "There is also some uh, my self interest is lying because I have heard the voice of the piglet screaming. Uh, if I go and sleep today." then I will never sleep peacefully because that scream will always be there hearing in my ears that I have done something wrong that I have not helped someone from their danger I have left them like without caring 
that is why they say even if you are not involved you are not hurting someone you are not involved into that crime you are watching that crime to be done then you are also a part of that crime so he said that that is why i had the piglet to come out so there lies my self interest so he says ultimately those who are doing altruism also is doing in their own self interest that is called psychological egoism for some that doesn't matter if somebody is saying i am hungry for 3 days i have not eaten please give me something ah uh, with the face with that no but some people will never care they don't care at all but some people if you see the when they see these type of people their face will change automatically oh my god even though it is true or false right uh, they are lying or they are saying the truth that doesn't matter but when they hear their words and when they see the fa- pale face they feel very bad if they don't help also they can't sleep so their own self interest is lying in it it is called psychological egoism that is the psychology of a person they say it is the ego of each and every one that they have to serve their own interest even the alt- including the altruistic people then the ethical egoism is saying that there is a ethical theory which supports that it is right if a person is acting in its own interest that is why now we are rejecting this theory we are not following this ethical egoism theory because ethical egoism says that it is right to act in one self interest if you say like that what will happen murder rape ha huh? theft will happen everywhere na because he is own self interest to become wealthy wealthy in wealthy he will follow any means he will go and kill a person loot his money okay a rape a small girl so this ethical egoism is not existing now we are not ready to accept this theory we totally rejected this theory and rational egoism is saying that what that egoism uh, it is rational it is rational for every human to act in its own interest it is rational rationally a human will act in the own interest of his self interest that is rational egoism is saying everything in the same everything is putting the same concept but in different manner okay it is saying it is natural psychological egoism is saying it is a natural for a human being because as a human you are born you are an animal you are an animal no we are an animal man is an animal so as an animal every animal has its own self interest na if if animal is going for hunting will it hunt for other other animals it is hunting for its own sake for its own eat, for for to eat to uh, survive it is doing same way and a uh, man is also an animal so he is also in the same naturally it is this concept then ethical egoism saying this is a theory according to a theory it is right that a person has to act in his own self interest rational egoism saying rationally if you think also that is reasonably also if you think that is the survival of the fittest theory is there according to it each and every human will act in his own interest in order to survive in this world that is no nothing wrong in it so these are the concepts of egoism so with this we are concluding today's class so it's uh, good that we see all everyone here and tomorrow also we will see everyone so goodbye huh? thank you so we'll meet tomorrow huh?